Big 12 College Football Saturday is presented this evening in brilliant Phillips HD. Today, one of the most exciting offensive attacks in the nation may be in store for a breathtaking experience when the undefeated Kansas Jayhawks fly into Boulder to take on a Colorado Buffalo team looking to stampede its way to victory. Kansas quarterback Todd Reesing, wide receivers Kerry Meyer and Desmond Briscoe provide the offensive firepower, which has catapulted the Jayhawks into the national front page. The rough and ready Colorado Buffaloes are very dangerous at home. Many hot teams in the past have cooled down when they get a taste of football at 5,000 feet. This is a must-win game for the home team Buffaloes. A Kansas victory could push the Jayhawks into a top 10 national ranking. Exciting Big 12 North Division rival the 15th ranked Kansas Jayhawks Battle of Colorado now on College Football Saturday. The crazy fans in Colorado are ready for more Saturday Big 12 football action. And what about the quarterback matchup? Reesing becoming a Heisman candidate. Hanson gets his first start of the season. From Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado, it's Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips HD. The undefeated 15th ranked Kansas Jayhawks take on the Colorado Buffaloes. Welcome everyone, Bill Land, Dave Lapham. Glad to have you aboard here in Boulder today. Folks coming into this one wondering just how good is nationally ranked Kansas? Unbeaten, yes. Had a Big 12 scare in their league opener against Iowa State though last weekend. They did, it was a shootout. And Kansas can score with anybody. They're explosive offensively, but defensively a little inconsistent. They're gonna simplify things, have the players playing faster, eyes on the right gaps, reading the right keys. That's gonna be paramount today, Bill, how well their defense plays. They are record setting on offense quarterback Todd Reesing seemingly knocking off a new mark every time he takes the field he's got a couple of go-to guys well he really does and they were just dynamic for their entire careers Briscoe Kerry Meyer they're fighting for the for the career reception mark they're one and two and last week against Iowa State they were spinning magic Briscoe had 12 catches Meyer had 16 let's take a look at some of Kerry Meyer's 16 catches you know, the interesting thing about Meyer is he's learned the wide receiver position from a quarterback perspective. So he understands spacing. He understands seams and zones. Always at the right spot at the right time for Kerry Meyer. He is his go-to guy at crunch time. As for Colorado, they were thumped last week by Texas and Austin, but gave him a scare for a while, making a quarterback change, taking the red shirt off of Tyler Hansen. He replaces Cody Hawkins. What does Hansen bring to the table? Well, in the passing game, Bill, he brings a stronger throwing arm. In the running game, he brings quicker feet. And I think you're going to see some quarterback draw. You're going to see some zone read. So he could help both phases of it offensively for the Buffaloes today. Regardless, making a quarterback change is a tough deal. You just need to ask head coach Dan. Hawkins. The biggest problem I have is obviously just, you know, yanking the reins off your quarterback. I mean, that's just a hard thing to do, and it has no, it does not have anything to do with the kid's last name. You know, it's just, you know, that's a hard thing. There's obviously some pressure on me to compete and go out there and make plays and, and you know, get a victory, but, uh, you know, the ball's in my court right now, and I got to go out there and run with it. We'll see what happens here today. Kansas is hoping to get Jake Sharp back in the lineup. He's been warming up. We'll see if he's ready to go here today. When we return, Darren Horton in our College Football Saturday studio. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips HD. Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips HD has Colorado against undefeated 15th ranked Kansas. The Jayhawks defensive end Jake Laptad. Well, he has a sack in four of his last five games. Darren Horton in our Big 12 College Football Saturday studios. We're today. The Red River rivalry was renewed. Sam Bradford returning to Dallas where he suffered that sprained shoulder injury in the season opener. Number two, Texas. Number 18, Oklahoma. The 104th edition of this rivalry. First quarter action. Bad news for the Sooners. Bradford pressured, taken down by Aaron Williams on that throwing shoulder. Re-aggravates the injury. Bradford done for the day. Third quarter action tied at six. Colt McCoy finds Marquise Goodwin. He breaks a tackle, goes in for the score. That made it 13-6 Longhorns. 
Later in the third, Oklahoma answers Bradford's replacement, Landry Jones, front. Ryan Broyles, he makes a nice move, races up the sideline, goes in for the touchdown. That ties the game at 13. Fourth quarter action now, Oklahoma down 16-13, looking to make a comeback. Jones over the middle, picked off. Earl Thomas seals the fate for the Sooners. Longhorns win 16-13. A shocker in Lincoln, number 17, Nebraska. No answers for that Red Raider offense. They had a fumble return, 82 yards for Daniel Howard, and the Red Raiders win it 31-10. But up next, we take you to Boulder. Last week, the Buffalo faithful saw Colorado take Texas to the brink. Can they finish the job this week against undefeated number 15, Kansas? We'll find out next on Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips HD. Big 12 College Football Saturday is presented by Phillips HD. The images that move you the most are what we deliver the best. And brought to you in part by Days In, the best value under the sun. And by Saw 6. Jigsaw may be dead, but his disease is still spreading in theaters everywhere. Friday. Beautiful evening here in Colorado. The Buffs 1 and 4, 0 and 1 in the Big 12 as the Kansas Jayhawks come to town at 5 and 0, unbeaten after their first Big 12 game against Iowa State. Let's take it down to Jim Knox with the Jayhawks head coach, Mark Mangino. Coach, you got an offense that's clicking on all cylinders right now, averaging 500 yards or better per game. What does it do for your offense with a Jake Shark returning? Well, having Jake Sharp out there gives us some explosion out of the backfield. He's a guy that can be a big play kind of guy. He's not going to just pop four or five yards at a time. He can take big chunks, and that will help us balance up our offense. Best of luck. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Jim and Mark Mangino, for stopping by moments before kickoff as Colorado will kick it away here. Frisco and Stuckey are deep for the University of Kansas. Coming off a 38-14 loss to Texas while KU was beating Iowa State in Lawrence. And this one knocked out of the end zone. And that'll bring on Kansas quarterback Ty Reesing in the offensive unit that is averaging nearly 41 points per ball game. Third best in the Big 12, fourth in the nation. And Reesing's numbers are just about mind-boggling with that 13 TDs to just three interceptions. And last week, Reesing throwing for four TDs in the win over the Cyclones. You know, Bill, you take his numbers for the season or for his career, it doesn't matter. He is a Heisman Trophy watch list candidate. He's 25 and six, he's a winner, big time. First and 10 from the 20. Terry Meyer comes to the near side now. Jake Sharp does get the start, has missed the last couple of ball games with a leg injury, and he was game time decision, and apparently is obviously ready to go. They fake it to him and bring it out on the flat, and it is complete as Meyer steps out of bounds at the 24 yard line. Let's take a look at the Phillips HD starting lineup. The Kansas Jayhawks, no seniors in the offensive line too deep. So this is a young, talented group. And certainly Briscoe and Meyer, maybe the best tandem in the Big 12, if not the nation on the receiving end. As last week, they were absolutely incredible. Meyer gets the start here for the first catch after having 16 for 142 yards and two scores last weekend. Reese delivers the other side this time, and it is complete out to the 27-yard line to Jonathan Wilson. Chappelle Brown makes the tackle. Let's take a look now at the Phillips HD starting lineup for Colorado defensively as Harad as well as Cunningham. Free check up front with West and then Burton, their leading tackler, along with Smart, I should say, who's got 50 tackles to pace him. And the secondary that has been making way too many tackles for a Colorado defense that has been giving up 30 points per game. That is 12th in the Big 12. Here's Sharp with his initial carry, does not get the first down on a third down and three as Burton led the way, the Mike linebacker, a captain. That's a good start for Colorado defensively, and Kansas really overloaded the formation. And they tried to get more hats than Colorado had over on that right side of the formation to get Jake Sharp. Look at this. Everybody's over to this side, trying to outgap Colorado. And they're going to run the football to that side. But Colorado reacted defensively. They got their alignments properly, hit the right gaps, and stopped the play. That'll bring on Alonzo Rojas to punt. Junior out of Miami, Florida, averaging 37 plus a kick. And deep is Espinoza and makes the grab at the 30. 
eight-yard line. So Colorado holds and ends up getting good field position. 36-yard kick on the play for Alonzo Rojas. And here's Tyler Hansen, his first start of 09. He's been through this drill. He was redshirted last year. Right. They took it off after six games. Last week, he came in in relief of Hawkins against Texas. Those are his numbers, and there's Cody Hawkins, the junior. Well, you don't want to see the numbers that you saw career-wise for Tyler Hansen. One touchdown, four interceptions. Cannot be negative in that ratio tonight. Hansen. Sophomore hands it off here. They'd love to establish a running game. On the carry is Daryl Scott, the 6'1 sophomore from Ventura, California. And he's tackled by Lovett Smith. Here's the Phillips HD offense for Colorado. They've got Solder, Adkins, as well as Miller that all go 300 plus. And Scotty McKnight, leading receiver, who has caught a pass at least one in 30 consecutive games. That's tops in the Big 12. You know, Bill, in the Big 12, for both offensive lines to not have a senior in the two deep is rare. Neither team a senior in the two deep tonight in two Big 12 teams. Second down and 10 for the Bucs. And again, the handoff and not much doing. And a tough run that time by Scott. And the Kansas defense coming up next. Again, brought to you by Phillips HD with the starting lineup. Stucky made the tackle on that play. And Blakesley Johnson lapped head as their sack leader up front with four and a half. Dudley and Wright, linebacker slot. And of course, in today's drill, you normally see five in the secondary. You saw Stucky who just made that tackle. They think he can play better. He was a first team all Big 12 pick last year. 38 tackles coming in. Had an interception in the win last year against Colorado in Lawrence. Third and nine. Hansen got good protection. And incomplete near midfield. Well, the fans want to flag, but Stephen Foster deflected it. So once the deflection occurs, there's no interference. It's off the boards. And they rush five. They drop Stephen Foster into a zone, a, a zone blitz deal. Watch him get the left mucker up and deflect it. And now the guy, if he runs through him, it, it's not any interference. Once the ball is deflected, everything is A-OK. -okay. And so right away, you know, you have a, a scenario where Clint Bowen, a little zone blitz, trying to confuse the young quarterback. Matt Delalo will punt it away, averaging 40 yards a kick, seventh in the league. Patterson will stay away on the short punt that rolls out on the Buffalo sideline. No score early going here. Big 12 action in Boulder. Welcome back to Big 12 College Football Saturday in Boulder. 68 degrees, beautiful sunny evening here, 15% humidity, slight wind, and as Texas or Kansas gets the ball back, Dave, what about the keys tonight for the Hawks? Well, they want to control the ground game. They want to stop the run for, for Colorado and make Hanson have to throw the football. On the other side, they want to run the ball, so Reesing throws it because he wants to. They want to win the turnover battle. You know, they've had, they've had 60 takeaways the last two seasons, ninth best in the country, can't turn the football over on the road. They're plus two, Colorado's minus one on the season. 28-yard punt is all Colorado got out of Villalo as a result. Kansas on the exchange, exchange of possessions starts at the 33. We've had six plays, seven yards so far for the two teams on the first two possessions. This one complete to Meyer. Now our fearless predictions presented by Phillips HD. Well, you look at the fearless prediction. Look at this young man, Jeff Smart. He's a poster boy for Colorado. He was a walk-on. Not only a starter, he's a captain. And he's a productive defensive football player. Appropriately named. He is a very, very intelligent linebacker. He understands the playbook. Very smart with his reads is Jeff Smart. For more fearless predictions on every college football game, log on to foxsports.com, keyword fearless. Kansas, long count here on the second and four after a six-yard pickup on first down. Reesing fires for Meyer, had good pressure on him that time. Brown was covering in the secondary. It was like a, a delayed blitz right there, and it was it was effectively, Billy did a good job of, def, of delaying the, the blitz and then getting after Reesing coming downhill. Ron Collins, the uh, defensive coordinator, trying to mix it up. You know, you're not going to... Can, you're not going to fool Reesing. He's seen every defensive configuration under the sun. You just want to make him hesitate for a split second. Just make him have that little half-beaded doubt. And that could be the difference in a big play 
or not. And you see KU's success on third down, one of the big reasons they're unbeaten. And this one just off the fingertips of Des Briscoe. Briscoe coming in, the Big 12 leader in yardage per game and receiving. Todd Reesing upset with himself because Briscoe got the inside release. He got jammed in the smush. Could have been a legal hit to the face mask, but he gets inside, Reesing a little bit too wide, let him too far inside. Even with the long arm of Briscoe, he looked like Inspector Gadget stretching out for that thing. Could not pull it in with that left hand. Briscoe last week, 12 grabs for 186 yards and two touchdowns. He and Meyer with 28 receptions between them and over 300 yards. Rojas, they're running a rugby style kick. And Espinoza better stay away from it because it's a live ball. Wow. Oof. Covered by. I don't get it, Dave. No. If you're not going to feel it, get away, right? Exactly, Bill. This, that's what happened to Colorado down in Texas last week on special teams. They had a punt block. They had a punt return against them for a touchdown. Have to be smart on special teams. Avoid a tragedy. Should never have happened. Nothing prettier than those flat irons that hang here outside of Boulder. Welcome back. Big 12 College Football Saturday. What a week ago. They're having playoff games snowed out today. Couldn't ask for better football weather here. Dave, what about our keys for Colorado? Well, the big thing for Colorado is they, they can't get beaten up in the explosives. I mean, they've only had two plays of 40 yards or more in the season. They've given up 11. And also, points per possession. Their defense has had Kansas two, three, and outs. They've had one possession. Got to score on those possessions. Time of possession is not as big a deal against the Jayhawks. They're so explosive. All right, first to 10 here for Colorado, and they hand it off in the backfield to Stewart. Picks up a couple as Stuckey makes the, time, the stop. Our fearless predictions are presented by Phillips HD. Oh, and Jake Laptat, I mean, here's a guy that all he does is, is make plays for you. He's also got uh, four and a half tackles for loss to go with the six sacks, 14 and a half sacks on his career. He's a very, you know, he, he knows what to do, knows where to be, and all he does is go out and make plays for the Jayhawks. Very, very smart football player as well. Most consistent form defensively. For more fearless predictions on every college football game, log on to FoxSports.com. Keyword fearless. Hanson in trouble. Oh, and he is popped. Back on the 16-yard line as he tried to escape. And Laptad on cue, big fella. Man, Jake Laptad, you got to get up the football field and watch Jake Laptad do exactly that. He kind of stuns Solder and keeps him at bay, and then he kind of cleans up. You know, uh, sacks are always because of team play. Pressure came from the other side and made Tyler Hansen drift over to Laptad. Laptad had his rush lane. Everybody stayed in their rush lanes. There was nowhere for Hansen to go. Laptad cleaned it up for his seventh sack of the season. Tip of the cap. Yeah, Max Anne Boule got the pressure yeah. from the other side. Laptad gets the glory. And now a loss of five on the play. Third and 11. Look at Hanson scramble. This is what he does best. Yeah. Missing on the sideline. And Kansas holds defensively as they turned up the heat there. Pressure by Jeff Wheeler, a senior out of Houston, Texas, as Colorado will have to kick it away again. Bill, Colorado cannot get in third and long. Third and 11 is not good for this offensive line. They're not real solid in pass protection. They have to do play action. They have to run the football. So to have Tyler Hansen in there to extend and create with those jackhammer feet can be helpful. He's got to find somebody to throw the ball down the field to and complete it, though. Galalo stands on his own two. Patterson is deep for Kansas. Have a chance for a return here, it appears, at the 46 midfield and then hit near the 47 yard line of Colorado. Good field position for the Jayhawks when we come back. Time for an American Airlines historical flashback. We go to 2003 here in Boulder. Two minutes to go in the game. Kansas, Colorado. Bill Whittemore hits Brandon Riddo for a 64 yard TD. Colorado counters with three scores, including Joel Klatt getting a 48-yard TD to Joe Kloppenstein, and Colorado up 17-7. KU comes alive with 28 second quarter points, but the Buffs rally. They send the game into overtime, again led by Klatt score, two field goals by Mason Crosby. And then in overtime, KU's Johnny Beck puts the Hawks ahead, but Brian Calhoun races 12 yards for a score, and it lifts Colorado to a 50-47 come from behind win here in Boulder. Man, talk about a shootout. Whew. 
tonight. No nope. possessions, 12 plays, 13 yards between the two teams of offense. Colorado's defense playing well tonight. Kansas defense much improved so far. Both teams on their first two possessions, one, two, three, and out. That's the old cha-cha defensive coordinators love to hear. One, two, three, kick. Sharp on the pitch out. Nothing doing that time. Colorado there for Phillips HD game break. Let's go to Darren Horton. Bill, a classic ending in South Bend. Irish Clawson. down seven with one second to go. Jimmy Clausen incomplete. And number five, USC makes it eight straight over Notre Dame. 34 to 27. Bill. All right, thank you, Darren. What a contest. That one was in South Bend. Both Ooh. of the rivalries, Texas, Oklahoma, and Notre Dame, USC, nail biters came right down to the conclusion of the game. Very different games, of course. And if you missed it, Texas beat Oklahoma today in Dax. Reese lofts it, and it is complete at the 22. And a first to 10 on the first big play of the day as McDougal gets the grab. Bradley McDougal, a freshman from Dublin, Ohio. He's tackled by Jeff Smart. And McDougal getting his 21st reception of the season. Well, what happens is the play is extended by Todd Reese. Gets out of pocket, creates, extends. McDougal comes back for the football. Another big receiver, six foot two, making plays. Sharp trying to turn on the Jets, and he is tugged down from behind. Bernie making the tackle from his safety position. Jake Sharp, we didn't know if he would go. The senior from Salina, Kansas, had missed the last two and a half games. Well, what he does, Bill, is he changes the whole geometry of a defense. He is the fastest player on the football team. When you think about all the speed Kansas has out there, that's amazing. Mark Mangino says he can run a better than a 4-3-40, and he matches up, makes great difficulties in matchups for linebackers coming out of the backfield when he, when he goes out to catch footballs, and he can just hit creases. Second down here, Sharp trying to find a crease. Stopped at the 15. Yeah, last year he had 860 yards rushing and 12 scores, helping lead the Jayhawks to that 8 and 5 record, 4 and 4 in the Big 12. Smart makes the tackle here. One of the reasons Kansas is unbeaten is that note right there, Dave. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, you look at it 26 times in the red zone, they score 22 touchdowns. That's why points per possession is such a big deal because Kansas is so efficient when they get in the red zone. Third and four for the Jayhawks. No score, but they're knocking on the door under seven minutes to go. First quarter at Folsom Field in Boulder. Recent checking again. Just in time. Reese got time now. They swallow him up. Bringing him down inside the 20. Marquez Harad as Harad comes up with the sack. His third of the season. He's their most experienced defensive lineman. He just stayed after him. Well, Ron Collins brushed five and dropped six. Watch the five come. And they kind of sort themselves out, stunting a little bit up front. Harad finalizes it. Nowhere to go for Reese with the football. Six people drop back into coverage in the red zone, and Kansas has to settle for field goal. No touchdown like they've done 22 times in their prior 26 red zone opportunities. Jacob Brandstetter going for a 37-yard field goal. He's three of five this season, his best a 31-yarder. Plenty of distance, and it is good. Brandstetter gives the Jayhawks the lead, 3-0 on Big 12 College Football Saturday. Welcome back as Dan Hawkins and Mark Mangino look on with Mangino's Jayhawks taking a 3-0 lead on Brandstetter's field goal. Key play in that drive was a 28-yard pass to McDougal from Reese. And now Kansas will kick it off here. Taken at the five-yard line to the 20 and spinning across to the 25-yard line. And Scott on the return. What about the quarterbacks and the change? Dan Hawkins told us a little bit about how they defer different. He's a lot like Cody and he's just a coach's kid, gets the whole picture. That's totally awesome. You love a guy like that. He loves the fire. Um, he is athletic. He does have a good arm. Um, doesn't have the same, obviously, experiential background as Cody in terms of all the reads and all, but we haven't really backed off on the package by any means. Um, so uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see him go because he is a baller and he's competitive. Kids like him. First and 10, and Stewart gets the handoff from Hanson. Hanson, a sophomore out of California, who last year when they took the red shirt off, 
threw 65 times, completed 52%, 280 yards, one touchdown, four interceptions. Started two games, got back into a shuffle, though, with Hawkins. They would hope that he will embrace the position, his experience that he had will pay off, Dave, and that they can go with one guy. But Dan Hawkins told us both quarterbacks are good with whatever the plan turns right. out to be. And Cody Hawkins may be in the game tonight. I mean, there may be situations where Dan Hawkins feels better about putting Cody under center tonight. He throws here, Hanson does, and it is complete at the Colorado sideline near the 36-yard line. And Chris Harris, a junior out of Bixby, Oklahoma, the tackler for the Kansas Jayhawks. First down markers brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com at home with the O. And you know, Tyler Hanson, the he's been in the system offensively for another full season. And he said, hopefully I won't make one read if it's not there, tuck and run. Go through my progression. He's more familiar with what's happening. Third and short. They pull it up, see if they can get it. Believe they do. By the way, that catch that was made in the previous play by McKnight. Scotty catching a ball for his 31st straight game with a reception. So he continues with his streak. Last week, it took a while against Texas. And, and Bill, can you believe this? Scotty McKnight, the only receiver on Colorado's roster that caught a pass last season. They have no experience at their wide receiver core. They're very inexperienced up front. A young, young football team playing three freshmen in the defensive line. Young everywhere. First down, and now Sumler comes in on a first and ten. And Hanson completes it, a strike across midfield, and they take it down near the 43-yard line. Well done to Ryer Gear. Gear, a senior from Grand Junction, gets his 22nd catch of the year, picks up 19. What they're going to start to try to do is get the tight end out. Instead of staying in pass protection, get him out into a route. Take the tight end, the fullbacks, get him out, check down and run routes for Tyler Hansen. Tyler Hansen, tighter RPMs, bigger arm strength, put it in a very tight window. And that's what they wanted to see, that, that stronger arm making a difference on those type of throws right there. Here had a touchdown last week in the Texas game. Hansen on first down, throwing again here, and is complete out of bounds as comes off to Marcus Seamus, the sophomore from San Diego. Now, Hansen, like Hawkins, as you heard Coach Dan say, a coach's kid. Yeah, his dad knows all about it. And uh, Tyler told us that he consulted his father and leaned on him when making the decision whether to take the red shirt off. Yeah, and his dad said, you know what, Tyler? You have no guarantees of when you're going to be able to play. Injury can happen at any time. You have a, ch a shot to play. Son, go play and do the best you can. That's Father Rick, who also was a quarterback at San Diego State in his collegiate days. And Tyler's Red mother, ball. an outstanding ball track athlete. Offense number 87. Five yard penalty, still second down. Well, Ryer Gear flinched, and that's going to cost him five yards that you don't want to cost. Colorado last week, 20 penalties, a record you don't want to break. They can't afford to do that. No, they really can't, and, and you're, going to, you're going to see a flinch. Oh, no, the tight end, he's out of screen. That's the left tackle. The tight end's out of screen. We don't have the flincher right there, but once you're in that, in that, uh, in that three-point stance or two-point, you can't rock forward to the line of scrimmage. Hanson hands it off here, trying to break it outside. So, nicely done on the play by Rodney Stewart, the sophomore from Westerville, Ohio, who came in with three touchdowns and 310 yards rushing. Wright missed the tackle, and that allowed Stewart to get a pretty nice gain out of it. Picks up 11, I believe. Well, Clint Bowen, the defensive coordinator for Kansas, likened uh, this young man, Stewart, to Darren Sproles. Stewart is 5'6", 175 pounds. He hides behind his offensive line, gets through very tight cracks. He disappears on you and all of a sudden explodes on you. High praise. I'd say a poor man's Darren Sproles. Darren Sproles, obviously big time, but I can understand with the dynamic of the talent and the stature, the, the comparison. Yeah, coaches usually say, uh, Bill Snyder used that reference with us last week, what time about saying, Darren Sproles like. Right. And meaning, all right, that's the way to describe it, but don't get me wrong here. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one of those. No doubt. Darren Sproles playing in the NFL, the level he's playing at, that's unbelievable for him to compete like that. Come out and measure here. First down, Colorado. That's trailing 3 nothing. Dan Hawkins got like. Kind of got something going on the offensive end. I'll tell you what, they're playing hard for him. This team has not quit. And watch, watch the Darren Sproles like Rodney Stewart here. Change direction, finds a crease, accelerate. Lower your pad level and break tackles. That's, that's, that's pretty strong right there to bust through two defenders because he has a lower pad 
level. You have to almost get on your knees to get underneath the pat level of Rodney Stewart. Plus, he's got the quicks to go with it. On the run for the first down. Not much that time. Dudley makes the tackle. Let's send it down to Jim Knox. Okay, Bill, you guys were talking about uh, Tyler Hansen's father, Rick. He does coach high school football. I talked to him before the game. He's the quarterback coach at Vista Marietta. And he told me, I asked him, hey, when did you know Tyler had a good arm? When did you think he was going to be a quarterback? He said when he was a ball boy for him many years ago. He was a ball boy for his high school team. He knew right then he had a good arm. He's going to be something. Well, really as a fire. senior, he threw for over 1,650 yards, 10 touchdowns. He also ran for 570 and 9 touchdowns his final year of high school. This is the eighth play of the drive for Colorado now. Hanson rolling out, scrambling, and incomplete. Good coverage by KU, intended for Seamus, as Lapt had to put the pressure on the quarterback that time. You know, sometimes they're going to change the launch point by design. Sometimes Tyler Hanson is going to change the launch point on his own. And all of that will help the young offensive line in their pass protection. The one thing you don't want to do, and this is what happened a little bit with Cody Hawkins, in the shotgun, same spot all the time. Defense zeroing on it. Tyler Hansen can change where he's throwing the football from. Harder for the defense to zero in and hone in on where the quarterback's going to launch it. Third and ten. We'll see what they do with the pass here. Hansen steps up again. Under pressure, he completes it. Near, and I think he's got the first down. Nicely done that time. Will Jefferson, the receiver. Patterson with a stop. Jefferson who just came in with one reception on the season. Well, they ran a little zone blitz again. Watch on your bullet right there. He's he's basically a shadow. He's basically a spy on Tyler Hansen. They dropped him off the defensive line to like a linebacker position. And here is mirroring every move that Tyler Hansen made. But he was still able to get the football off for a first down. That's what he brings to a little creativity, a little, little uh, extended plays. First and ten and the handoff to Stewart. Kansas trying to toughen up. Now this Kansas defense comes in with some impressive numbers. They are only allowing 351 yards a game and only giving up 18 points. But some say look at the schedule and then you say Iowa State last week had 512 yards. So there are still some questions about this KU defense. Yeah and Iowa State is running the spread offense like everybody else in the Big 12 and they really spread Kansas out and Kansas made a lot of mistakes. They felt like they had too much on the players minds. Simplify when your mind isn't as active your feet can move faster. And that's what they're hoping. Simpler game plan play faster. Hanson 4 of 7 from 40 yards. He's hit four different receivers. Oh. Kansas defense rises here as Stewart is stuffed by Drew Dudley the junior out of College Station Texas who came in with 36 tackles on the season for the Jayhawks. This is a, a blitz that is very effective because it's it can be either a run or a pass. This is a run blitz right here. He comes back on off the back shoulder of the pulling guard Drew Dudley former fullback now playing linebacker tremendous effort a very safe call by Mark Mangino and his co coordinators Clint Bowen and Bill Miller because if they run the football that's what happens if they pass you're putting pressure on the quarterback. So a third down and 12 now and Hansen going to take a timeout with nine seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Colorado trying to take the lead trailing three nothing. Hey tomorrow on Fox NFL Sunday the Giants will be heading to New Orleans to battle the Saints in a showdown between undefeateds. The Lions take on the Packers the Panthers square off against the Bucks or the Rams take on the Jaguars or maybe you'll catch Donovan McNabb and the Eagles battle the Raiders or the Cardinals square off against the Seahawks. Hope you got it all there'll be a quiz later coverage <laughs> begins tomorrow beginning with America's number one pregame show at noon Eastern 9 a.m. Pacific check your local listings. A couple of interesting things going on here Bill so far early on Kansas is offense is uncharacteristically stagnant. I mean, they're sputtering and stuttering. Some point during the season, they're not going to have their A game. Defensively, you have to step up and win a game because your offense has won shootouts for you time after time. Clint Bowen right there in the middle in the red top, he's telling his defense that, look, we have to continue to play. Offensively, Colorado's defense is playing well, obviously, because Kansas' offense is struggling. And Tyler Hansen has made a little impact. They're moving the ball well. Now Kansas just one first down tonight as we approach the end of the quarter and flag here. A little false start up front. It's going to cost snap. Colorado. False start. Number 66 offense. You know the other thing Dave still third down. is although there's a lot of doom and gloom painted around the Colorado program 
Coach Hawkins is telling us the team and the players are looking at us. We are getting better. Right. They gave Texas three touchdowns yep. last week yep. in a game in which they yep. led. So they come in here and go, you know what? If we just forget the scoreboard for a moment, why shouldn't we be able to compete and pull off one today? Well, Dan Hawkins, and there's Cody, his son, and signaling in plays. They know that if they play smart football and don't self-destruct, they can hang in there. They self-destructed against Texas. You can't put yourself on your schedule when you're playing Texas or Kansas. Third and 17 after that penalty. Can they respond here? Complete to McKnight. Kansas smothers, though, as they come to the football with great pursuit. And that'll end the first quarter. The ball at the 28-yard line of the Jayhawks. It'll be a fourth and long. Be a 45-yard field goal attempt or thereabouts when they're ready for it. And this elevation, 45, 46 yards, chip shot. Watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips HD. Kansas with a 3-0 lead as we head to the second. Sun setting over the Rockies here outside of Boulder, Colorado. College football Saturday. Bill Land, Dave Lapham, and Jim Knox with you. Take a look at our Direct TV game summary. Kansas sharp returns to the lineup, but not sharp. Brandstetter's got the only points, and Hanson so far so good. And he's distributed the ball, Bill. Four different receivers on his five completions, so he's spraying it around the football field. Kansas only has one first down. In, on the game and what they're doing Colorado is keeping Kansas's offense on the sideline and they're resting their, their own defense time of possession heavily in their favor they've got to score points though yards time off the clock don't beat you points do it Eric Goodman on a field goal attempt from 45 yards Goodman has got a 54 yard of this year against Colorado State and he drills this one tie game Goodman now five of nine the junior from Colorado puts it through and the Buffs have knotted up 15th ranked Kansas at three apiece a little smile on the Colorado sideline with Dan Hawkins and crew boy did he get quick elevation on this he would have made this from 55 or 60 hit the right upright and bounces through the old oh. doink. <laughs> <laughs> that was two thirds up that goal post though Welcome back, Big 12 College Football Saturday, presented by Phillips HD as Colorado has tied it up, and the Buffaloes will kick it off. Goodman with that 45-yard field goal, and Kansas will receive here. That was the first play of the second quarter, and the Jayhawks see if they can get their offense on track that has been certainly held in check in a 41-yard, a 43-yard first quarter for them. And it is brought out. Briscoe, 15. Oh, mama, he was popped hard and brought down. Well, Todd Reesing, he loves him some Colorado. He made his debut as a Jayhawk in 2006 in Lawrence. He entered the game for the first time as a true freshman. Jayhawks were down 9 to nothing, and he immediately goes to work. A five-yard TD pass to Derek Fine. He then connects John Cornish on a 22-yard scoring pass. Reesing got in the act himself with a three-yard run, and Kansas comes back to win 20 to 15. Reesing threw for 106, ran for 93, and that was the start, as you look at those numbers, of something very, very big. Yeah, he's been brilliant. He really has. O'Pearl comes in the backfield now. This one, though, drilled out on the sideline and incomplete intended for Wilson, and what a hit by Benjamin Burnett. I'll tell you what, Colorado is bringing the wood. Ray Polk covered that kickoff, and they stopped him inside the 20. Go airborne, you're going to get punished if you go airborne, Colorado says. And that is a nice stick right there by Bernie, as you described. And boy, you land on that, on that hip, a one-point landing on the hip. All of a sudden, Wilson says, man, I got a little hitch in that right hip. Wilson will come in with 17 receptions for 215 yards. Second and 10 now for Todd Reesing. Senior from Austin, Texas, out of Lake Travis High School. Recent scrambling here. Oh. Lost the football. Dives back on it. And Colorado's got it. Colorado football. The Bucks recover as Harold and also pre-check in on the play. Just came out of his hand. I it think. did. It did. It came out of Todd Reese's hand as he was trying to bring it down and, and create in the backfield. Off 
the edge. Jeff Spikes has a little bit of difficulty. Spikes, as he tries to re react back up, he, he bumps into his quarterback as he tries to recover and help in protection. Spikes dislodges the football from Reesing's right hand, and as a result of that collision, Colorado gets the first takeaway of the game. They get the, sh the short field. What will they do? Got to score a touchdown. Don't settle for three. Get seven. First and goal to go. Tyler Hansen. But they skate. Touchdown. Touchdown, Rodney Stewart. Yeah, he crossed the plane. Colorado gets a field goal, gets a turnover, a touchdown just like that, and the Buffaloes have stunned the, the Jayhawks momentarily. It's Rodney Stewart, 5'6", 175, but they run a little power play. And look at him surge. Look at the second effort. He's not afraid to run between the tackles. He ran like a big old boy, not a 5'6", 175 pounder. Great second effort for the touchdown. Smelled the end zone. The point after by Goodman, who is now 16 of 16 in PATs, and another look. Oh, look at the effort. Look at the surge. Leg drive, spin, extend, touchdown. Big effort. Colorado up by a touchdown early on. Big 12 College Football Saturday is presented by Phillips HD. The images that move you the most are what we deliver the best. And brought to you in part by FreeCreditReport.com. Stay on top of your credit score and credit report at FreeCreditReport.com. And the first down markers brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% off brand names every day at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. Instead of Colorado destructing like they did last week in Texas, Kansas on the road destructs. Spikes collides with his quarterback, Reesing. Spikes is just trying to do his job, just coming back to block his defensive lineman. He doesn't know where Reesing is. And Reesing trying to create a play. They collide, ball on the ground. Only the third lost fumble of the season for Kansas. Six giveaways on the season now. Three interceptions, three lost fumbles. Desmond Briscoe deep and will let this one go. And Kansas will have it first and 10 on its own 20. Phillips HD game break. Let's go to Darren Hort. Bill in Tuscaloosa, number three, Alabama, doing it with defense early. Mark Barron kicks off Steven Garcia, and he turns into a running back. Look at him break tackle. He's going to cut back, still on his feet, brings it back 77 yards for the touchdown, and the tide is rolling 7 0 in the first. I think they're the best team in college football. I really do. I think Alabama but the most well-rounded team in the land. That defense is something oh, else that yeah. Saban and crew have put together there. Here, it's been about defense so far in these first quarter and few minutes as the Jayhawks, 13 plays, 29 yards. McDougal, the one decent big play, and that led to their only score, which was a field goal by Branstad. That's their only first down of the game, and it led to the field goal, and a poor him now in the game at the running back position. And Colorado, you can see their chest swelling defensively, gaining confidence on a snap-by-snap -snap basis as they shut down this high-powered Kansas offense. Well, Perham averaging 83 yards a game, the top freshman rusher in the Big 12, fourth overall. This one is complete as Reesing drills one out to Meyer. Smith is in on the play for the Colorado Buffaloes. Kerry Meyer, the senior out of Pittsburgh, Kansas. Kerry Meyer learned the, the receiver position from a quarterback perspective. Still sits right next to Todd Reesing in quarterback meetings. He sits in on quarterback meetings, not receiver. So he and, and, and Reesing talk about, here's how we're going to beat this coverage. Here's where I'm going to settle in. Here's where I'll be. These guys are on the same page every single route. She is record-setting week against Iowa State. That's a great month for many receivers. He had 43 coming in on the year, second in the Big 12. Oh, what a grab across the middle. A sensational catch for a first down. Jonathan Wilson hangs on after the pressure was put on Reesing by Brown. Well, let's just sight adjust. Here comes the corner blitz, and quarterback and receiver both see it. Reesing knows he's going to get rid of it. The only guy that's going to pick him up is him. So does his receiver. His receiver, Wilson, runs a slant. They had the sight adjust. Receiver saw the, the blitz. The quarterback did. Same page. Move the chains. That's good operation and efficiency. 
First and ten for the Jayhawks. Sharp in the lineup gets the football. And Jake runs across the 35 to the 37 plus. And Bonsu, Nate Bonsu, the freshman out of Allen, Texas, 6'1, 195 pounder, makes the stop for the Buffaloes. What they did is they have the nickel defense on the field, and Chappelle Brown, the nickel uh, defensive back, blitzed off the slot. Chappelle Brown, 5'7, 175 pounds for, Kansas, uh, for Colorado. He's got three sacks, so they've done that with him quite a bit. Kansas was ready for it, diagnosed him. Yeah, he has 38 tackles coming in here. A preseason first team all conference pick. Sharp, nothing doing as Colorado's defense toughening up once again against the run as Bernie and Smart make the stop for the Buffs. In the first quarter, Kansas was 0 for 3 on third down. And the reason is it's third and medium or long. I mean, they haven't had very many third and shorts. And this is another third and six. It's not an easy conversion. KU 1 of 4 and three third down conversions. Racing. Telling the play to Sharp here. This Colorado crowd has been loud and into it tonight. Third down and five to go for the Jayhawks. Three receivers to the right side of Reesing. To throw it here. Chased out of the pocket. Oh, incomplete. Needed to throw that away. Kerry yeah. Meyer was well covered. Bernie right there. He broke on the route. Bernie was breaking on it like the primary receiver. Tell you what, Colorado's well prepared. They're diagnosing the routes. They're in great coverage. They're breaking on the football. And they're getting pressure on the quarterback without having to blitz all that often. They're getting pressure with four rush, drop seven. Five rush, drop six. That's a nice little mix. And they are mixing it up on Todd Reesing. Have him out of rhythm a little bit. And that's rare to get Reesing out of rhythm. Rojas, whose career best is a 77-yard punt against Colorado, booms this one. Espinosa trying to circle from the 15. And and brought down at the 21 or 22 yard line. We'll see where they mark the football. Colorado with the lead will get it back after a 44 yard punt and a three yard return. Puffs on top, 10-3. On the Geico Halftime Show, Colt McCoy joined some elite company in the Red River rivalry. Highlights of number two Texas against 18th ranked Oklahoma coming your way. On the Geico Halftime Show, we send things back to Boulder, Colorado, to Bill Land, Dave Lapham, and Jim Knox. Guys? Thank you very much, Darren, as Colorado off to an impressive start here with a 10 3 lead over the Kansas Jayhawks, who came in unbeaten, ranked number 15. And Tyler Hansen with a quarterback change. So far, so good. Lockridge gets the carry here. Sophomore out of California is stopped for a loss on the play. Let's take a look at the biggest play of the night. Well, Spike's trying to make his play. Knocks the ball out of his quarterback's hands. He's reacting back on his defensive end. Colorado recovers short field. Rodney Stewart says, I'm going to finalize. Great contact balance, great spin, great leg drive. Breaks the plane. Short field, one play, touchdown. Mark Mangino on the road. He knows one of his big things is we can't turn the ball, ball over. Not only turned it over, but turned it over inside the five-yard line. Second and 14, Hanson go to the air. He's five of eight for 41. Got a little time here, still looking. Chased, got room to run. 15, 20, stays in bounds. Watch out, 30, and knocked out of bounds, but not before he gets a first down at the 37-yard line. Great play by Hanson. Kansas only rushed three. The reason he had all the time, they only rushed three down linemen and dropped eight. Hanson said, nowhere to go with the football. They get eight guys covering my three receivers. I'm going to be patient, and I'm going to run the football. Scotty McKnight peels back and gets a block. Receivers working on the perimeter. He got two good blocks from his perimeter receivers, and that's when teammates are working for other teammates. You like to see them doing that for Hanson because on the perimeter he's got some wheels. He picks up 20 last year. He ran for 261 in his limited time and averaged four plus per carry. And again on the ground Stewart. He nearly breaks it for major yardage before a stop by Daryl Stuckey and Stewart rolls to the 44 yard line. First down markers brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% off brand names every day at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. Kansas realizes now Colorado's here to play. They realized that before this series, when the turnover occurred and they took the touchdown lead, now Colorado is flying around the football field. Their confidence is building snap by snap. KU are trying to 
Stewart corner in the backfield, and they do. Good pursuit that time as Stewart could not turn the corner, and Stuckey there to make the play. Uh, it's a great play because it looked like they had something. They ran the counter and they pulled both the backside linemen. Watch the linemen pull and get to the perimeter. And it looks like they may have something. But boy, look at Stucky. He comes off of it on his own and just makes a tremendous play, a tremendous effort on it. Good action. Actually, that was Quigley, the, uh, the, the converted yeah. running back playing linebacker. That was Angus Quigley. Third and eight. Play action. Hanson. McKnight with a reception. 45. He's got to get it to the 47. See where they spot the football. It's very close to a first down. Harris and Stuckey there on an eight-yard pickup. Chains will move. First to 10, Colorado. You know, back to Quigley when we get a chance. Little naked bootleg right there. You have your, your receiver right there available to you. Let him make the play. He gets he gets his scholarship to catch and run after catch. But many players, Mark Mangino has moved from offense to defense. They believe in him and they respond. Colorado's run now on 9 of 11 first downs. They do it again here. Scampering out of bounds is Lockridge on the Kansas side of things. And Drew Dudley there chasing him. Picks up four or five. We've got 7.56 and counting here. Second quarter. Kansas started the scoring off with a field goal. Angus Quigley right there, former running back. He didn't work out at the running back position. Mark Mangino talks to him and says, you know what, I think you can play linebacker with your body type. Quigley says, anything to help the team. Look at him now, on the field, making plays. They believe in Mark Mangino, believe every word he says. Oh, I should have what he has done. This one is live. It is complete inside the 20. Seamus has Colorado knocking on the door, taking it down to the seven yard line. A 36 yard pickup. Chris Harrison coverage. Seamus at 6'2, 215 pounds, working against Harris. Seamus is starting to get it figured out. Look at the throw by Hanson. He just dropped it in there like he walked up and, and gave it to him. Perfect ball in stride. Good catch. Tell you what, things are going pretty darn well for Tyler Hansen. His confidence is swelling on a snap by snap basis, and rightfully so. Yeah, and I beg your pardon, he's at the 12-yard line. I think I said the seven. Stand corrected. It'll be first and ten at the 12-yard line. Colorado with the lead and hungry for more. On the up to Jayhawk. Proud Papa there as Rick Hansen, father of Tyler Hansen, looking on with his son getting his first start of the season after the red shirt taken off against Texas last week. He started 0-2 in the passing game since he's 7 of 8, and he's got him sitting at the 12-yard line, somewhere in the backfield here to the right of Hansen. On the first and 10, rolls out, brings it right back across the ground, complete. Just an outstanding call by offensive coordinator Eric Keesaw. Roll the quarterback to the right, throw back pass to the tight end. A little misdirection. Kansas is ripping in one direction on the football field, and gear hides and runs a little route, opposite direction, wide open. Maybe a replay. Made a shoestring catch. Shoestring catch. Did it hit the ground? I mean, obviously he scored. Did he catch the football before it hit the ground? Ryer Gear makes a shoe top shoestring catch. Tyler Hansen excited on the sideline. The throwback pass. Does the ball hit the ground? Catch. Oh, that's a great catch. Possession. Touchdown. The that and he, and he and his knee hits ground the ball's well over the goal line I mean that's no brainer there that's just an outstanding effort tight end rewards the quarterback tough catch yeah. here makes it after running that little I mean there's nobody in the vicinity for the Jayhawks because they were fooled by the misdirection roll right throw back left confirmed touchdown hands go crazy again as gear gets his third touchdown of the season had one last week against the Longhorns in Austin 
And now the senior from Grand Junction, Colorado. You see what Colorado's done with their red zone possessions. They just haven't had enough of them over the year to have a little bit better record. And, and now the tight end is getting out in routes against Texas. They had to stand and block because Texas was so much pressure. They feel like they can handle uh, Kansas's rush and get the tight end out in routes. And he's paying big dividends. Eric Goodman on for the PAT. Snap is good. Kick is good. What an early shocker. Colorado. New quarterback. Everything's rolling. Gear for the TD. Welcome back. Ryer Gear makes it 17 3 on a incredible catch for a 12 yard TD reception. Briscoe takes it from the goal line for Kansas here. The 10 tries to split him and flies out near the 25. A flag is thrown late. Usually this is a legal block in the back. Let's take a look at the touchdown. Ryer Gear is going to chop the defensive end, get up and run his route. We used to call this the tight end high, and it's a little misdirection. 10 yard penalty, first down. Beautifully executed, little tight end hide. He cuts, he's to the ground. They lose track of him because he's a blocker. And he executed a great block and he went to the ground. So the linebackers and secondary said, well, he's done. He's not going to run any route. He's a blocker. And then he gets up and runs the little throwback route. Excellent call by Eric Keesaw at a perfect time in the red zone. And that sideline is alive and happy. Hanson had a 20-yard rush on that drive. He was 3 of 3 in the air for 56 yards. They go 8 plays, 79 yards, 4 minutes and 10 seconds. And now with a 17 to 3 lead. And Kansas commits the penalty, Dave, on the kickoff. Sets him back a little further. First to 10 from its own 15. Just trying to establish something here on the ground this time. With 6.45 to go here in the first quarter. Now let's join Jim Knox for our free creditreport.com sideline report. All right, Bill, I tell you what, it is a different sideline here on Colorado's sideline. Just the momentum's completely changed. Fired up team. The biggest, biggest supporter for Tyler Hansen is now Cody Hawkins. The first time they come off after making the touchdown, they leapfrog each other. The last time, just then, they were playing the bullfighting routine. We got to get some of that on camera if they score another touchdown. Those guys are having some fun right now. Well, that is great to see because you always hear the talk about the quarterback situation. Those two have supported one another throughout. Here is Reesing rolling in trouble. And it is incomplete. Would have been a heck of a grab at the 43-yard line. Brown broke it up that time for the Colorado Buffaloes. And Todd Reesing is having a tough night so far. Well, he has so much confidence in his receivers. Desmond Briscoe being one. Even when he's covered, he thinks he's open. But not that time. Brown with an outstanding position. He gets inside position, keeps it. Ball hits him in the shoulder. Briscoe cannot adjust and reach over Brown to make a play on the football. Boy, Colorado is playing great defense. They are plastering routes down the field. And here comes Reason. It was 6 of 11 for 55 yards. Three seconds on the play clock. Just does snap it. Another third down. In trouble. Incomplete off the hands of Desmond Briscoe. Pressure was put on him again. Colorado's defense is revved up. Not looking like one that has been given up 389 yards a game. Sean Moeller comes clean up the middle. He's unblocked. And they're doing a little delay blitz action. They're allowing Kansas running backs to release out into routes. And it's called a delay blitz. And that's exactly what Colorado's doing. And they're getting clean. They're having free running runners to, to, to carry uh, to, to uh, Todd Reesing. And he can't find Kerry Meyer and company downfield. Rojas will boot this one away, and it is a dandy. Espinoza makes the catch, flag thrown back around midfield. Rojas brought down at the 32-yard line, and will sort out the penalty flag as Colorado expected to get possession with 5:45 to go in the half. During the kick, holding by the return team number 42. 10-yard penalty, Colorado keeps the ball, first down. 
forty nine yard kick and then the penalty and Colorado keeps possession. Let's take a look at Hanson's work and particularly that last drive. Now Tyler Hanson showing it all rolling to his left. Now he decides three rush eight in coverage nowhere to go with it tuck it and run. And then he says I'm going to lay it right on the hands of my wide receiver Siemens. And then the little tight end high throw back pass to the tight end here. Here made a heck of a play for his quarterback and he knew it. Hanson went to gear and said thank you. I could have thrown a better ball. You bailed me out. I love you man. The fans love the situation. 17 to 3 Colorado and the Buffs with the football. the end of the kick first down and there you have it so it's first to 10 from the 20 yard line and they got 545 to work with here Colorado one time up remaining the Jayhawks three Stewart 25 Stewart bringing him with it to the 32 and move those chains as Harris makes the tackle for the Jayhawks well you talk about make you miss in space no wonder they were saying, hey, Clint Bowen saying, this is a little Darren Sproles in it. This is what Darren Sproles was all about. Watch him make the miss in space. In space, one on one, cut away from you, spin away from another, break a tackle, finish, lower your shoulder pads, finish the run. Remember, 5'6, 175 pounds. Stewart just 21 for 40 yards against Texas last week, but he has a couple hundred yard games. Hanson on the run has to throw this one away. You know that's a simple and they got a penalty flag you might have Lyman downfield. I think Colorado had leaked Lyman down the football field that's going to cost him an eligible receiver down the field. And the Hanson right there just ran away from lap time. his speed prevented a sack. There may be a penalty as a result of it though they thought Lyman thought he was going to. There's no foul for intentional football. grounding or excuse me there's no foul for ineligible downfield. The quarterback was outside the pocket the cross ball across the last image. There is no foul second down quarterback quarterback outside of the pocket threw it across the line of scrimmage. If you had not made the line of scrimmage the line would have been down the field ineligibly. But the speed of Hanson prevents the sack separates from lap tag. I mean you can't defend speed. Speed is the ultimate killer. And there's one of those things that never shows up in a stat chart right. that he pays off and keeps him out of a negative play and now it's second and ten and he has presence of mind to throw it away. He knew if he gets it past the line of scrimmage he's fine. Oh, oh Seamus going off without the football. So it'll be a third and ten now for Colorado and interesting to see if the Buffs can maintain. They've got the momentum entirely on their side right now. Kansas trying to get a stop here. See if they can't get the football and get something going before intermission. Well, Kansas is going to have to get a takeaway or some kind of special teams play in their favor because right now Colorado's got all the momentum. Kansas are playing their fifth and sixth freshmen to start for them this year. John Williams and Lubbock Smith. Both of these football teams are young on the defensive side of the football up front and in the offensive lines. Neither have a center and they're too deep in the offensive lines. Colorado or Kansas. Three of six on third down the Buffaloes. What happens here. Hanson. What a dance. Going to keep it. Going to beat a man. He does. First down Buffaloes as Hanson doing it all. Well this is the dimension that he brings. Kansas rushes four. Drops seven into coverage. Hanson knows I have nowhere to throw the football so I'm going to have to tuck it and run. His offensive line does a good job of, of stymieing the, the rushers and he finds a lane. He finds a rush lane that's that's compromised. He turns it up the football field. He says to his receivers turn and make a block for me. I'm going to get a first down. His feet have been the difference tonight. His feet have created very favorable plays for Colorado. Hanson. On the first and ten, right at midfield. This pass intercepted. KU picks it off as Stuckey comes up with the INT at the 30 yard line. Part of the reason is Blakesley got a hit on Hanson just as he was delivering the football. Kansas got some pressure, and as a result, 
Hanson threw the football before he wanted to, and Stuckey said, thank you. Watch right here, Blakesley drills him, and he doesn't see Stuckey. Stuckey's the underneath safety, and Stuckey goes airborne and has the big takeaway. That's what we're talking about. That's what Kansas may need to get ignited. Mark Mangino had said, we aren't getting near enough turnovers, and Stuckey is a guy they're looking to make the big play. His first pick of the year, he had five last year when he was a first team all Big 12 performer. See what Kansas can do with it now. Reesing wants to strike quickly. Prisco couldn't come up with it across midfield. Second, I like the call, though. I like the call, too. Go right for the throw. Second time tonight, he has been too far leading Prisco inside. It happened in the first or second throw of the game for him. And this time, if he hits Prisco in stride, Prisco may go to the house. But he leads him too far inside. Briscoe has to go airborne to try to make a play on it. If he hits Briscoe and keeps him on his feet, yards after catch are there. Four straight in incompletion now for Todd Racing, and he is 6 of 13 for 55 on the night. Pitches it here. Jake Sharp, nowhere to go. Helmets are flying on this one as Perkins makes the tackle from the safety position for the Buffaloes. Well, Kansas runs the speed option to the short side of the field. Colorado says, now we know you do a little bit of that. Not a whole lot, but just enough to, to maybe make us think about not blitzing. Or did they play that speed option to perfection? Everybody had their assignment down to a team. Third down. Crowd is geeked. Third and ten for the Jayhawks from their own 30-yard line, trailing by two touchdowns. Reesing. Oh. Intercepted Colorado at the 25. Brown, will he score? Knocked out of bounds. Oh, my, the Buffaloes come back again. Reesing's fourth interception of the season almost turned into a pick six. Colorado has two takeaways. Both they get short field inside the five yard line. Colorado only rushes three and they drop eight into coverage. And Todd Reesing has nowhere to go with the football. They have three rushers and he just never sees. And I can't believe he didn't see him, but he never did see. Jaleel, Jaleel Brown, Brown, wow, his second front. interception of the year. He had one against Texas last week. And the big thing is he returns at 35 yards, and it's first and goal at the one-yard line. Not only giveaways, giveaways short field. They hand it off. Number five, as again, they give the football to Stewart, trying to make it happen, and can't punch it in on the first down carry. Stucky there to lead it for KU. Well, I'll tell you, a masterful job is being done right now by defensive coordinator Ron Collins mixing it up. Rushing three, dropping eight. Rushing four, dropping seven. Rushing five, dropping six. And he's got it mixed so well. Todd Reesing, I've never seen him out of rhythm to this extent. He's holding on to the football for an extra amount of time. Flag on the play here before they get underway. Illegal substitution. Defense. More than 11 players on the field. Half the distance to the goal, still second down. So well, the Jayhawks saying, hey, we can't stop them with 11. Let's see if we can get an extra guy on the field. I mean, that's yeah. the kind of night it is for Kansas, though. Well, Angus Quigley, who hasn't played that much, I, I, I think he was confused a little bit. They have 12 players in the field. This works in Canada, but not here in the United States of America. And you have uh, too many linebackers. Angus Quigley, the, the 12th man on the field, trots off the field. Unfortunately, it only cost him half the distance to the goal, so it's half the yard. Second down. Hits it himself. Waiting for the signal. Touchdown, Buffaloes. Well, Hansen is now thrown for one. He's rushed for one. And I'm sure all the Colorado Buffalo faithful are saying, what took so long? Tyler Hansen, his coming out party has been a big celebration so far tonight. I mean, he has made plays with his feet, has made plays with his throwing arm. He has been the catalyst. He has been the spark that this Colorado the offense previous has play is under further review. Now they're saying, what did the ball, the plane of the ball cross the goal line before his buttocks was down? His lower body was down. What was the ball crossing the plane? 
see as he turns up the football field. He's got the football back. His butt is down as the ball crossed the plane. Now his hand has, but has the football. The referee signals touchdown. He has a view of it. Pretty good hit. Turns him around. The ball goes backwards. When is his butt down? And when is the ball crossing the plane? The official on the field said the ball crossed the plane before his buttocks hit the ground. Very nice stick right there that was delivered Dudley, by Drew Dudley, yeah. the linebacker. And, and really, his butt never hit the ground. He's on top of another player. I think it stands. I mean, he's arching his back. He's making sure his butt doesn't hit the ground. Arching his back, stretching the football. The head linesman says, I have a view of it. Touchdown. There's not enough evidence to overturn it, I don't think. The call in the field is the big deal, and I don't think there's anything to overrule what was called in the field. That is the key, obviously, here. And Colorado waiting for the verdict. He was scrambling, arching his back, doing everything he could to keep his elevator off the deck. And I think he did it. This place. After further review, ruin the field stand. Touchdown. So Colorado, 14 points off Kansas, two turnovers. Turnovers are so huge at all levels of football. And they saw it burn them last week right. when they tried to upset Texas. Right. And Texas scored on three turnovers. And now tonight, it's a little payback to Kansas. They're making the Jayhawks pay for their miscues. Turnovers and blocked, blocked punt. Punt return for a touchdown. Pick six. That's what killed them in Texas. Kick is good by Goodman. 24 to 3. And a little leapfrog for the quarterbacks on the sideline. Are they having some fun in Boulder tonight? <laughs> Welcome back. Racing and crew looking on. Saying what happened? Down 21. Kickoff. Briscoe. Will he bring it? Nope. Going to down it there. And they'll take it on their own 20-yard line. Plenty of time here for Kansas. And they have all three timeouts. But no rhythm so far tonight. They've had 25 plays, 50 yards. My math isn't good, but that's two yards per play. And that won't cut it for one of the most powerful offenses in the country that came in averaging 519 yards of offense third in the nation they've been averaging uh let's see yards per play 6.6 .6 yards per play tonight a measly two yards per play you got to really tip your cap to the colorado defensive football team there's your yardage story colorado times three and taking advantage of the turnovers recent to meyer the 25 stays in bounds. No, stepped out just uh, across the 26 yard line. Kerry Meyer and Brown missed the tackle on that play. Got an extra yard or two. Well, that time Collins runs, uh, he rushes four and drops seven. And here we see Scotty McKnight and Kerry Meyer. Look what they've done. A catch in consecutive games 31 and 29 straight games now for these fine receivers for either university tonight. Brought to you by Days In. Recent. Second. Going to keep. Flag throw. Stepped out at the 30. He's got the first down if the play stands. Uh, is he going to call hold, though? Holding. Yes. Yep. Number 74, offense. 10-yard penalty. It spikes. Second down. Spikes. Uh, Tough night for Jeff Spikes. Yeah, he, 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 he was involved in the fumble, but honestly, that's not his fault. Right. He's trying to react back and block the defensive end to make sure his quarterback doesn't get sacked and he bumps the quarterback. He's got his hands outside the framework of the body, grabbing the shoulder pads. You can, if, when the referee can see the hand, now you get the choke hold when he turns. When the official can see the hand outside the framework, and then the defensive lineman turns his body and you don't release, you got the choke hold, you got a holding penalty. Mangina with the shades on. He may not want to watch what he's seeing right now of his Kansas Jayhawks. Second down and 14. And Sharp finally gets loose. Close to the first down, about a yard shy, it appears, at the 29-yard line for Jake Sharp as Brown and Smart were there. Just a great call. It's a shovel pass. If it's not executed, it's not a fumble, it's an incompletion. And Sharp just works himself in, in the middle of the field, is wide open, and Sharp follows his center right up the football field and gets as much as he possibly can. Jeremiah Hatch doing a good job. Great read with a left-handed shovel pass. Under 125 now. Sharp tries to muddle his way through the 
heavies and has got the first down at the 30, so that'll stop the clock at 119, and Benjamin Burney making the tackle. Now, Kansas feels they have to do something in terms of putting points on the board. They are three score da scores down right now. Mark Mangino didn't anticipate this. Reesing fires a bullet, and Briscoe with a reception should be another first down at the 40. Jeff Smart covering on the play. Desmond Briscoe, the junior from Dallas, Texas, out of Cedar Hill High School. And what Ron Collins is doing here, he knows I'm going to rush three and drop eight. I'm going to drop eight into coverage and make Kansas try to find windows. We're going to cover your four receivers or five receivers maximum you can put out there with eight guys in the secondary. Ron Collins masterfully mixing up his rush and coverage. Take a look at what we're talking about here. And, and it's easier to do when you're up 21 points, rush three and drop eight, because you're not as worried. You're playing basically prevent defense. You're going to have three down linemen rush. Eight people will be in coverage. Big umbrella. You know, you got five receivers and eight people covering them. Nowhere to go with the football. That's how shy he is, it appears, of the first down. Slide a credit card through there. Oh, I guess. And. Reesing looks for the call. Reesing, 8 of 16 for 74 yards. Starting to get a little rhythm, though. He's completed the last three. Myers got four receptions for 21 yards. No. Meyer, 477 yards coming in. So he's closing on the 500 yard receiving yard mark for the season. Hanson doing his best impersonation of Todd Reesing, running yeah. around, creating and extending plays. And then when he's throwing the football, being very accurate with it. Second and an inch. Going for it. Briscoe, did he stay in bounds? No. Desmond Briscoe, a brilliant catch, but could not tightrope it. Todd Reesing a little inaccurate tonight. He took Briscoe out of bounds. Briscoe's wide open. Keep him in the field of play. And the right foot hits the right sideline. All you have to do is get one down. Right foot. Ooh, no, it's on the chalk. Boy, just that far off. It's a game of inches. Normally, Todd Reesing hits him in stride and his yards after catch. They're going to take another look at it. It's that close, but I don't think that'll be overturned. The officials run the under further review. The officials right there to make yeah. the call. So Mark Mangino and crew will look on. Boy, Mangino's done a masterful job at Kansas. Here's another look at it. Airborne, right foot. Nope. nope. It's not this white line, it's this, that white line. Yeah. It's not the big white line, it's the, the beginning of the chalk that you see there, not the, not the dark, dark. It's a little confusing, though. Yeah. So you can see why they wanted to take another look at it to make sure. Well, what it is, is you've got, basically, you've got a, a, a little After bit of a... After further review, the ruling on down. the field stands is called. Incomplete pass, third down. Here's what's happened on instant replay throughout the Big 12 so far this season. About that 12 coaches challenges and zero plays overturned. So, so it's Kansas, third inches. yeah, third and in inches now. Good call there by KU. Figuring, all right, we can get the first down. We'd hope on an inch. Well, they knew they weren't going to have eight in coverage when it's third, second and in an inch. Good call. Sharp as the first down. Tackled by Chappelle Brown. Clock stops to move the chains once again, and really, the Jayhawks have all three of their timeouts left to them, so execution's the key right now. Inside 50 seconds now as Reesing has to double pump. Meyer needs a block. Then he slips at the 45, but he's got a first down. Briscoe, so that'll stop it again. Briscoe came out and tried to help him out, but as he turned it up the football field, his foot gave out from under him. Kansas would call their first timeout, it looks like. A pickup of 13 yards. Kansas with a timeout, and the Jayhawks, really their best looking drive of the night. Yeah, unfortunately for them, they were backed up. You know, the, oh, Colorado's done a good job in every phase. They've won the field position. They haven't self destructed on special teams like they did down in Texas in a couple of areas. A block punt and a punt return that went back to the house against them. So they cleaned that up. They haven't turned the ball over. Well, they had the, the one turnover, but they got it right back. Right. After the pick by Stuckey, right. Colorado gets Joel Brown to, to the one yard. Yeah. So they were able to overcome that. They're plus one now, Colorado is. 
in the turnover department still. They get two takeaways. Kansas has the one. Coming in here tonight, Kansas was plus two on the season, the takeaways. Colorado in turnovers, minus one. Reese's got them both. Fumble the ball and through the interception. That's very uncharacteristic of him. First to ten now for the Jayhawks. Reese, they come after him. He unloads. Briscoe oh. trying to stay with it. Nearly picked off. And again, you see Brown being helped up. He nearly had. Well, I'll tell you, he's doing a great job of contesting Briscoe. Because there's Briscoe running it down the football field. And, and at this point, Todd Reeson says, I have all the confidence in the world in contested catch, jump ball, and Damon Briscoe, Desmond Briscoe. But Brown has matched him body strength for body strength when they've gone vertical at the apex of the football. So racing second down 33 seconds two timeouts still remaining for the Jayhawks he drops the football got a man Meyer. Oh. oh a circus catch by Kerry Meyer first and ten inside the 20 yard line well, wow. here, here's where a quarterback has to keep his poise oh the, don't don't panic he still have the route and throws it behind him Kerry Meyer what a great flick, hip flexibility Meyer it in inside the ten down inside the five yard line 15 seconds to go they still have two timeouts just remaining one. just use one of them yep so they have one left but I'll tell you what back to back plays by Kerry Meyer were unbelievable Dan Hawkins looking for a timeout to get his defense collected Kansas had already called it yeah that's what I was thinking that I thought Colorado might jump it on him because they were a little shaken there well watch Kerry Meyer on these back to back plays Ron Collins like you kidding me all half this, watch the hip flexibility. Turn, pivot. I mean, that's that is sticky fingers right there. That's flypaper fingers. And then a great route and hit in stride. I mean, that's one of the best balls Reesey has thrown tonight. Hitting his receiver in stride, not making him slow down. Kerry Meyer knows when Todd Reesey needs him, he knows where to be and when to be there. He is his clutch go-to guy in crunch time. Meyer, 90. Two receptions over 1,040 yards last year. And two back-to-back -back great catches here. First and goal from the four. Reesing, will he go to him again? You betcha he will. Meyer, touchdown, Kansas, just like that. Oh, I'm telling you, boy, that is just a, a wide receiver and a quarterback that's a wide receiver that understands the, the wide receiver position from the perspective of a quarterback because Kerry Meyer played that spot. He and Todd Reeson sit right next to each other in every quarterback meeting, and they talk about these situations. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's where I'm going to be. And they just ran a clinic in that last drive. Remember the game we had, Bill, last year? Colorado, uh, uh, Kansas, Missouri. Unbelievable. At, at Arrowhead. Oh, man. Meyer. And the game winner. And Reeson were unreal. Point after is good here by Brandstetter. Jacob Brandstetter, a junior from Lawton, Oklahoma, is now 27 of 29 on the year. Makes it 24-10, Colorado. Watch this route. Gary Meyer comes in motion, pivots back out. He looks at Reese and says, you got me. And all he does is a breakdown in the coverage right there. And Meyer knew that, that there was going to be a little pick action here. And watch it happen right inside here. A little pick your bones, get a little separation. No call by the official because the receiver can run his route as long as you don't set a moving pick like you do the NBA. You can't set those moving <laughs> picks. You know what I mean? And, and, and Meyer just finds himself wide open. What a drive by Todd Reesing and Kerry Meyer. 24 touchdowns they combined for now. Dynamic duel. Incredible combination as Reesing has now thrown for 82 touchdown passes in his career. Fifth in Big 12 history. Over half of them to Meyer. Yeah. 82 and 44 of them to one guy. And you know what? The thing I'm most about Kerry Meyer, totally unselfish. He could have his dauber down. I want to play quarterback. No, I'll play wide receiver and help the football team. No one puts themselves above team on this Kansas roster. He was the backup last year. This year he's not, although he could go back. Right. It is Kale Pick in case something happens to Reeson. But what a player and what a person. So with 11 seconds to go, Colorado will bring it out. And it is taken out near the 20, about the 18-yard line, and that's where they'll get it as Scott on the return. That is huge to score at the end of the half like that, going to the locker room with some momentum, because they can score on you. They just showed it. Kerry Meyer, the only guy in Kansas history that'll thrown for 1,500 yards, had over 1,500 yards receiving and 400 rushing. I mean, that is a trifecta there because of his prior 
years at the quarterback position. I think he's going to be a very valuable member on somebody's NFL roster. He can play third quarterback, wide receiver, special teams. He can save you a bunch of roster spots. He's going to play on Sunday for a long time. So with six seconds to go, they'll just down it here. Hanson will. Still a terrific half for Colorado, but a little wind taken out of the sails of this big Buffalo crowd on a parents' weekend. Hanson, 8 of 14 for 97 and a touch. The pick turned out to not be a problem because they got it right back. He's also run for a TD. Reesing, 13 of 23, led him on an 80-yard drive to score just before intermission. Let's have it to, to Jim Knox standing by with Coach Hawkins. Okay, Coach, take away that last drive. You got to be pleased with your defense, really mixing it up well and taking Reesing out of rhythm in the first half. Yeah, they're half. doing a nice job. You know, our young guys have been getting better each game and played a tough game last week, but had a couple plays get away from us, but they're balling tonight. Your thoughts on Tyler Hansen's play in the first half? Doing a great job, really is. And he's got some guys making some plays around him. So all those guys are coming together. Thank you, Coach. Halftime in Boulder, Colorado, with Colorado leading Kansas 24 to 10. Right now, let's head to Darren Horton for the Geico Halftime Show. Darren. Thank you very much, Jim. Welcome to the Geico Halftime Show here in our Big 12 College Football Saturday studios where some of the best rivalries in college football were renewed today. At the Cotton Bowl, it was filled to the brim with Burnt Orange of Texas and the Crimson and Cream of Oklahoma. Highlights of the Red River rivalry when the Geico Halftime Show continues in a moment. Time in Boulder, Colorado, number 15, Kansas trailing. And the Buffaloes getting it done. Todd Reesing with some problems, a fumble here, which led to a Colorado touchdown. Again, our score 24-10 at the break. Welcome back to the Geico Halftime Show, about 15 minutes away from kickoff of the second half between number 15, Kansas, and the Buffaloes of Colorado. That's the same amount of time it would take you to save 15% or more on your car insurance. So with an eye on the countdown clock, let's unpack the highlights for the 104th time. It was the Red River rivalry. Sam Bradford taking on Colt McCoy. First quarter action, no score, and a second and 12. McCoy dropping back. He loses the ball. Austin English hits him. Ryan Reynolds recovers Oklahoma with the ball. Later in the first, bad news for the Sooners. Bradford pressure taken down by Aaron Williams. He lands on his throwing shoulder and re-aggravates the injury. Bradford done for the day. So we go ahead. Late second quarter action. Texas knocking on the door. McCoy going to take the draw up the middle. Spins off a would-be tackler. Loses the ball. Oklahoma recovers in the end zone. So the Sooners defense stepping up. They had a 6-3 lead at the break. We head to the third quarter now. Tied at six when McCoy hooks up with Marquise Goodwin. He breaks the tackle, taking it to the house for the score. 13-6 Longhorns. Later in the third, Oklahoma answers. Bradford's replacement, Landry Jones, finds Ryan Broyles. He makes a nice move and he races down the sideline for the score. Jones showing what he can do. Ties the game at 13. Fourth quarter now. Oklahoma down 16-13. Looking to make a comeback. Jones over the middle. Picked off by Earl Thomas and Colt McCoy joins the elite. He becomes just the third Texas quarterback to beat OU three times. Not great numbers today. 21-39, 127, a touchdown, two fumbles, but he gets that third W against the Sooners. ACC action in Atlanta, number four, Virginia Tech versus number 20, Georgia Tech. After a hokey touchdown, Tyrod Taylor takes a big hit going for the two-point PAT. He was visibly shaken on the play. Tech down 21-16, just over three to go. Josh Nesbitt went a Huge day, two, uh, 122 yards rushing and three touchdowns for Nesbitt, 28-16, right now 28-23. Uh, Crimson Tide, they're up 10-0 in Tuscaloosa in the second quarter on the Gamecocks. Steven Garcia picked off by Mark Barron, who brings it back for a pick six. Again, 10-0 the score there. When we continue on the Geico Halftime Show, highlights from South Bend, where number 25 Notre Dame faced their biggest test of the year against number five USC. We'll have the highlights when the Geico Halftime Show continues. Wow. 
We're at halftime in Boulder, Colorado, where the Golden Buffalo Marching Band is performing. Number 15, Kansas, trailing by 14. Tyler Hansen with a big first half for the Buffaloes. 8 of 14, 97 yards again. 24-10 at the break. This is the first of two games here on College Football Saturday. Later today, we're going to take it to Tempe, Arizona. Matchup of Pac-10 Powers, the conference's best defense. And Arizona State braces for Jake Locker in Washington, who beat USC. That's coming up at 10-15 Eastern as we go to break. A brain win. We introduce Colorado offensive tackle Nate Solder, who carries a 3.4 in ecology and an evolutionary biology. The big guy wants to work with big animals. He's rocking Jethro Tull's bungle in the jungle on his pod. The Ivan Drago lookalike is a brute with brains. Back with more of the Geico Halftime Show in just a moment. Again at halftime in Boulder, Colorado. Tyler Hansen with a big first half, 8 of 14, 97 yards, and this big touchdown pass to right ear Greer, 24-10. Our score at the break. Time ticking down on that Geico countdown clock. So let's get to more scores and highlights. Number five, USC looking to beat number 25, Notre Dame. Fourth quarter, Irish trailing 34-20. Jimmy Clausen to Golden Tate for the touchdown. So Notre Dame within seven. Final seconds of the game, last minute. Clausen to Robbie Paris over the middle, tattooed. But he holds on. He had to be helped off the field. So Notre Dame in great position to tie it up. They got three shots on first down. Clausen's pass is tipped, caught, but out of bounds. So we go to second down. Clausen's pass this time broken up. USC thinks they've won the game, but the referee signals that there's one second left. So on third down, last chance for the Irish. Clausen's pass incomplete. He was looking for DeVal. Camara SC wins at 34-27. Matt Barkley with a career day. 19-29, 380, two touchdowns. He's 5-0 as a starter. In Lincoln, number 17, Nebraska had no answer for Stephen Sheffield. He hooks up with Baron Batch, who makes his way untouched to the end zone here. Gave Texas Tech a 7-0 lead. Sheffield threw for one, ran for two. Later in the first sack, Lee swings it out to Niles Paul. He drops it. Daniel Howard going to pick up the fumble, take it back 82 yards for the touchdown. Texas Tech upsets Nebraska 31-10. Down goes number seven, Ohio State in West Lafayette. Drew Brees text Joey Elliott, told him to shock the world, and he went out and did through for 281 and two touchdowns. 26-18, your final. Purdue snaps a 19-game losing streak versus ranked opponents. Our 15 minutes just about up. Ready for the second half. This has been the Geico Halftime Show. When we return, back to Folsom Field. Big 12 College Football Saturday from Boulder, where it's Colorado 24, the Kansas Jayhawks 10, as we get ready for the start of the third quarter. And Land Rover fans wants to send you to the college football game of your choice. Let's take a look at the coaches poll in the Land Rover top 10. Florida barely gets by Arkansas. Texas, you know, got by Oklahoma today in a defensive struggle. Alabama leading South Carolina. Va Tech falls to Georgia Tech. Boise State, a midweek winner over Tulsa and the rest of the top 10 results as you view them. Land Rover wants to send you to the college football bowl game of your choice. Go to LandRoverUSA.com to register for the Road to the Bowl sweepstakes today. Welcome back here where Colorado, a stunning halftime leader, Bill Land, Dave Lapham. We've got some great highlights of the quarterbacks, but somebody forgot who the star was. Hanson gets his first start of the year. He looks like what we thought Reesing would. Exactly. I mean, Tyler Hanson had Todd Reesing in him in the start of the football game. Three rush, eight drop in coverage, nowhere to throw it. Tuck it and run, pick up big yards. Then throw a perfect ball, drop it right over the shoulder. Outstanding throw by Hanson. Then the old throwback, tight end high. Ryer Gear makes the great catch and finalizes for the touchdown. But Todd Reesing did come back at the end of the second quarter. And who does he go to? His main man, Kerry Meyer. Goes to the sideline, keeps his poise after dropping the snap. Tremendous catch by Kerry Meyer, showing flexibility as he turns to catch that one. Touchdown reception. Outstanding effort by Kerry Meyer. Eight catches on the on the first half for 79 yards. Statistically, look at that. Kansas rushing for minus one yards. Two turnovers. Both those giveaways. Short field for Colorado scores inside the five-yard line. That's been the difference in the football game. 
Kansas has self-destructed. Colorado has taken advantage. All right, let's take a look as uh, we come back here to the kickoff to see can Kansas take that halftime momentum? At least they slowed down this Colorado bunch and this rowdy crowd. But Kansas is kicking off to start the second half and into the end zone. And they'll bring it out to the 10, the 15, and the 20. Still on his feet. And the 30, a good, tough run that time by Daryl Scott. And Colorado will get the benefit of it operating near the 31-yard line on a first and 10. And there are the possessions for the Buffaloes in the first half. It took a while to get it going, Dave, but when they did, wow. Well, they had a 13-play drive, only netting a field goal. And then short field, touchdown right here. Short field, touchdown right here. Those were the giveaways by Kansas. That's the difference in the football game right now. It's a 14-point differential. Two Kansas turnovers gave Colorado the short field touchdown. Kicker got hurt on that tackle as McKnight goes in motion here. First and 10 for Colorado from its own 31. See how they answer after the half. Hanson got a little help. 40 and knocked out of bounds near the 41. Close to a first down depending on the spot. Our first half leaders Hanson can't ask for much more. He had the one pick but they got it right back. Rushing game, a little bit of everybody helping out. Stewart leads, and Gear had the great catch for his TD. Well, Hanson was the leading rusher as well. Four carries, 38 yards. And Hanson threw for nine, or another 97. So he had 135 total yards in that first half. It was the Tyler Hanson show, other than the interception, was the only mistake that he made when Stucky picked him off. But Colorado got it right back. First and 10, pitch to Stewart. Trying to turn it up. 35. 50, stayed in bounds, and Stewart scampers along the Buffalo sideline and moves into Kansas territory. We're going to mark him out near the 41-yard line, an 18-yard pickup. Now, well, Laptad's in hot pursuit, but this is a 5-foot, 675-pound tailback. I think I can, I think I can, I think he can get the corner. Yeah, I can. Laptad dives, can't get there. He distorts all the angles, the geometry, angles of pursuit are too flat. Drew Dudley can't get there as well. That's a good play, getting to the perimeter. Get outside on the on the Kansas defense. So the buffs come out very impressive to start the second half. And again, Stewart. That offensive line is pushing. We talked about the young offensive line for the Colorado Buffaloes. They have answered tonight. And this is a zone read. Hanson gives the football to Stewart, but Hanson can keep it. Watch him decide, okay, give it. He can keep it. He makes the proper read. It goes up inside to Stewart. Don't be surprised if they adjust defensively, take Stewart away. Hanson will take it out of his belly and get to the edge. That's another element that Hanson gives him. Zone read, quarterback draw. He's got the jackhammer feet. Three straight plays of 10 plus yards per play for Colorado. Hanson in trouble. And he is brought down a sack on the play at the 36 yard line as Wheeler is there. And this is something that Kansas has said they desperately needed to do was to put some pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, and, and, and basically stay in your rush lanes and control Hanson. If you distort your rush lane, he will abuse it. In the first half, Colorado did a good job. Uh, the, the, the explosive plays were even Steven. They wanted to make sure they weren't beaten in that area. And they did score points off of possessions. That ratio, points per possession, was pretty good because they had those two short fields for those two easy possessions that really inflated it. And it's second down. And 16, and it is complete. Scott, watch out, Scott, across the 20. First down, Buffaloes, and the crowd is back into it now as well. Dudley and Stuckey, the stoppers for KU. Perfect call by Eric Keesaw. He ran the tight end high for the touchdown pass. This is perfect. You got to think they're going to come and they're going to rush the passer. Run the screen. You run screen or draw if they're going to get after the quarterback. And Scott just found the seam. Lyman got out in front, got their blocks, executed perfectly. Colorado out in the red zone once again. Scott picks up 19. He'd only had three receptions coming in for 16 yards total. The fake to Scott. Look at Hanson, the 10, and a flag thrown as he's got it down to near the seven yard line. I think they may call Ryer gear for a hold potentially. This may be coming back a little Holding. bit. Holding, number 97, offense. It's 87. 10 yard penalty. 
repeat first down. There is no yeah. 97 offense, it's 87. But the design of this play, the design of this play is incredible. They'd hurt Kansas a little bit with the counter, pulling the two off linemen. So they run the counter and fake the, the handoff. Watch the lineman pull, fake the handoff, keep it. It's a counter read. And look, Kansas bites on it wide open, and they call gear right there for the hold, and that's going to cost him yardage. It's from the spot of the foul, so now it's like, what, first and 16 or so. Yeah, and that's a big play because they were down inside through the seven or the six. So for first and 16 official. Timeout. Colorado. Colorado going to talk Time it out. over here. Colorado. That is their first of the half. Buffalo's 24-10 halftime lead. Impressive drive has stalled just a moment here in the early moments of the third. Big 12 College Football Saturday is brought to you by Geico, where 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Phillips HD, the images that move you the most are what we deliver the best. And the first down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% off brand names every day at Overstock.com. Overstock.com, at home with the O. Bill Land, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox with you. Big 12 college football Saturday, and look at this. Colorado, over 15th ranked Kansas by 14. And on their opening drive of the third quarter, they have it with a first down and 16 following the timeout. Tyler Hansen with his first start of the season, going for six, and it is incomplete in the end zone. Take a look at our Geico eyes on for the second half tonight, and it'll be Rodney Stewart with 14 rushes and 64 yards and a 4.6 average per carry. In the second half, he's got two carries for 28 yards. Because at halftime, he had 12 carries for 36 yards for the touchdown, so he's busted a couple of big ones. Keep your guy call eyes on him in the second half because he's going to be a big factor. He had 105 at West Virginia, had 127 yards against Wyoming and two touchdowns on 32 carries. Here is Scott this time, and he is stopped near the 21-yard line. Dudley making the play for the Jayhawks. You know, this is a, you, you can't, you can't settle for field goal here. Unfortunately, you had a penalty, a self-destruction, a holding penalty as you penetrate deep into the red zone. And it was a, a, a counter read. They ran the counter play, faked the ball to Stewart. Hanson kept it. He was out of the perimeter all by his lonesome. Here got the hold and it put them off schedule. Now they're looking at third and long. They would have been second and short or first and 10 inside the 10. Third and 15 officially here for the Buffaloes. Play action. Hanson rolls out. Got time. Looking, looking. And it is complete, but no out of bounds as going for Marcus Seamus, the sophomore from San Diego. And Bashirs was covering on the play. Well, here's what a good run. Well, here's the throw. Does he have to catch? Is he in bounds with the catch? Knees out of bounds and not really having possession of the football. Good call. Yep. So drive stalls, but he's a 39 yard field goal attempt this time for Eric Goodman. Remember, Goodman hit the 45 yarder earlier to get Colorado on the board. Colorado was challenging the ruling on the play that it was an incomplete pass. Uh, I, I don't know if this one's going to get overturned. Because you have to have, what's the first, you have to have possession, full possession. The foot, the left knee is it, it's in the it's in the white and it's out of bounds. He does have possession, but does any is there anything in bounds before his left knee hits down? Where are his elbows? Is the elbow down before the knee? Oh, the right knee's down Ooh. before the left. Yeah, he might. The right knee's down before the left. So this could be a good challenge. Are they simultaneous? The elbows aren't down, but watch the right knee possession. Right knee first, then oh, it's bang bang right and left knee. And the other thing to remember always, Dave, is the. Replay official pieces this together. Right. He looks for the catch on one angle. He looks to see where the knee or the down is right. on another angle. And, you know, it's 
It's possession and one knee equals two feet. <laughs> that used to be the yeah. rule. John Madden's big thing in the NFL. If you get that knee down before any other body part goes out of bounds, it's a catch. And it looked like that right knee may have hit down a millisecond before the left because we had to freeze it to show that. So I can't blame the official for calling it no good because he thought both knees hit simultaneously and the left knee was out of bounds. Take another look. What a huge call this could be. A very tough call. And he's he's prancing on the sideline. Right knee oop, before the left, or is it simultaneous? That's tough. That's tough. Because the left knee is out, but the right knee is in. So did the right knee get down before the left. I mean, is it is it bang bang or is it simultaneous? Bang. Oh, that's tough. That's a tough call. The official, great view of it, looking right down the line. And remember, that's the call in the field. Is there enough evidence to After overturn further, it? The ruling on the field stands as right. calls. Not and enough complete evidence pass. to overturn it. That is one of those that had he ruled it yeah, good, exactly. it wouldn't have been overturned. Right. The, but call, the call in the field is imperative. It's a big thing. So, you know, again set up for what should be a 39-yard field goal attempt by Eric Goodman. And that's a timeout. Buffalo's only have one left. If this game turns into a yeah. tighter affair, you don't want to. They had to burn a timeout early, and they burn a timeout on that challenge. They have one to go, and there's 10 minutes and 40 seconds to play in the third quarter. That could come up to be huge down the stretch. We'll see if it's a factor or not. Goodman trying to tack on a three spot here. Knight is the holder. Snap is good. Kick is certainly long enough. And it is good. So Goodman. They get points on the board in the first possession. Yeah, you get greedy and like to have seven, but Dan Hawkins got to be happy with that scenario, how it finally played out. A, a three-score game once again, Bill. That's the big thing. Twenty-seven ten, Colorado after the successful field goal attempt. Now let's join Jim Knox for our free creditreport.com sideline report. All right, Bill, it's to see Kerry Meyer right here ready to get out on the field with that Kansas offense. Talking to Mark Machino at halftime, he said they got to continue to get this offense in gear, find a way to pick up those blitzes. Colorado's giving them some havoc there on defense. Also, do not let Tyler Hansen run wild. He was not happy about that. We'll see what happens on this series, guys. All right, thank you, Jim. And, and Colorado came out and reestablished themselves. Today. 10 plays, 47 yards, 8 up, 4 minutes, 18 seconds, and got three points out of that deal as Briscoe will let this one go, and Kansas will have the first and 10 at the 20. And let's take a look at the 15th-ranked Jayhawks and their possessions in the first half, Dave. Well, you know, it was it was minimal plays. I mean, that, that, that's, not, that's not Kansas football right there. But here's the drive. You know, you have the turnovers, obviously, that, that gave short fields for, for touchdowns for Colorado. That was the drive right there. How big is that one going to be? That was recent to Meyer. That was the thing of beauty. I mean, will it get Kansas back in this football game and be impetus as the second half unfolds on their first possession? Or is it back to the drawing board? What a recent and crew do. Impressive drive to end the half where they went 11 plays, 80 yards, and were precision lock. Colorado turns up the heat and across the field and complete at the 31 yard line it'll be a first down as we take a look at KU's first half leaders there's Reesing's numbers 141 a touch and a pick right. sharp looked a little better later in the half yeah he, he's still knocking off some rust and dust look a little tentative but Kerry Meyer you can rely on him he's missed the dependability reliability those are good abilities to have huge catch on that touchdown drive by Meyer oh. absolutely incredible reception and a heck of a play by Reesing after he had dropped the ball from the snap Recent fires here. There's Meyer again, taking a beating and hanging on. That ought to move the chains again as Bernie makes the tackle and the ninth reception for Meyer. He had 16 last week. That's 25 now, Dave. In, in, in a little over uh, six quarters of play, and he's bracket coverage. And still, boy, I'll tell you, the two teammates, they knock heads. That was a Coco butt. They did more damage to each other than they did to Meyer. I'll tell you, that was uh, Bernie took some serious abuse on that hit. Meyer, 30 receptions in the last two and a half games if you want to tack on the start of this quarter. And nine for 82 tonight. Here he is in motion. Reesing with the snap on a first and ten. Good protection. Now he's in trouble. Steps right back wow. up and drills Briscoe to the 30-yard line and the Jayhawks 
have come alive as Brown makes the tackle, but Desmond Briscoe, a 27-yard pickup. Are you kidding me? This is vintage Todd Reeson. He steps up in the pocket like he's going to run the football, slams on the brakes, puts it in reverse. I'm stepping up, I'm going to run. No, I'm going to peer right out of there, and I'm going to find him and throw down the field. That is just instant. Reeson again. That's intentional ground. He didn't make the line of scrimmage. He out of the tackle box. It didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. He was under pressure and, there and for free check. And they're seeing, they're looking right now. Is he outside of the tight end? Yeah, there and they you throw go. the flag. He wasn't outside of the tight end. And that's what Reese is saying. Intentional grounding, number five offense. Lost the down at the spot of the foul. The quarterback was in the pocket. There was no uh, receiver in position to catch a pass. Second down. And that's just like a quarterback sack. I mean, yeah. same deal. You, you lose the down, you lose the yards, the whole nine yards. And Todd Reese, again, mixing it up. Four rushers. And the pressure starts to get there. He throws it away to avoid the sack. It's a good call. Mark Mangino saying, no, there is a receiver in the area. And he definitely threw that football away to avoid the sack in the pocket with no receiver in a in a visual area. Second and 20 from the 40-yard line of the Buffaloes. Kansas, 15th-ranked team in the nation on the short side here tonight. Reese dancing again from midfield. Unloads. Meyer coming back, took a good shot in the back and incomplete. We'll have a chance to revisit our keys here in a moment as you know, far as this one, Dave. And, and this is why Kansas is losing this football game. Certainly didn't get their ground game going. And Colorado got one going. Turnovers. They lost the turnover battle when they gave Colorado short fields inside the five-yard line twice. Those keys could have gone worse. That's why the Jayhawks find themselves down right now by three scores. They were down by two scores at the half. Colorado's not doing anything fancy, Bill, on the pass rush. They're just twisting guys up front. And Kansas isn't picking up the stunts and twists. Reese has the play, third and 20. Looks like they're going to blitz him here now, though. They have to call timeout. So KU burns a timeout. They have two left, the Buffs one left, and we got 8.59 to go in the third quarter. Stay with us. Welcome back, Colorado 27-10 over the Kansas Jayhawks. Crazy day of college football in the Big 12. Let's take a look at the Big 12 standings. You see, if Colorado pulls off the win here, everybody in the North will have a loss already, Dave. That's right. Nebraska get handled today by Texas Tech. Kansas State doing a job on AM today. Yeah, Kansas State put the whipping on AM right now. And Oklahoma State early going against Missouri. Of course, Oklahoma fell to Texas this afternoon in Dallas. Right here, it is a third and 20 for Kansas. They called timeout to contemplate it at the 40 of Colorado, with the Buffs leading at 27 to 10. A lot of confusion. Like Colorado's in their head. Reesing steps up here, got a man, and it is complete. He is short of the first down. Brown makes the tackle short of the first down as Wilson makes the grab. 19 yards, they needed 20. Oh, the key on that play, Jake Sharp. What do you do without the football? Here's what you do. You blitz pickup, and you chop it to the ground, and you let your quarterback deliver the football and make it fourth and makeable. And they're going to go for it. They're not going to settle for field goal. Jake Sharp doing a good job of giving Todd Reese enough time to get the ball down the field to Wilson. And oh, got him. Colorado got him jumps. Uh, literally jumps. Yeah. Who was that that came flying across that Beatty? DJ Beatty? Yes. He joined the parachute club. Dead ball. Offside. Number 59, defense. With the five yard penalty as a first down. Man, that's a mental mistake right there. Now Schiller. you allow him in the red zone. I, I like the aggressiveness and I like the effort. He's going airborne up and over. I'm going to get on Reese. Oh, the ball's not a son of a gun. What am I thinking? Man, that's a huge penalty. You know, West Virginia rushed for 257 yards against Colorado. In the following six quarters, Colorado allowed just 45 yards on 38 carries. Reese throws this one. Back, Back to Reesing. He needs a block. Reesing got by a man. To the five. Going oh. No, he did not get in. Oh, wow. What a play. What gutsy call. On. This is this is an unbelievable play to call. You know, we saw the tight end hide. Now we see the double pass. Remember, Harry Meyer was a quarterback. Throw a backward pass to Kerry Meyer. He's going to throw it back again to Todd 
Greasy. I'm going to you, you're going to me. Make one miss, and then take it in. Oh, she almost gets it. Wraps the dazzle, executed to perfection. Perfect timing of the, of the gadget play. Brady with the tackle to stop the touchdown. Now the whistle stops this play. A 14-yard pickup. And the previous play is under further review prior to the snap. I guess they want to make sure they were back. The first one was a backward pass. You know, if it's not a backward pass, then the second pass is illegal. And it obviously he's not scoring. They're not reviewing if he scored a touchdown or not. And uh, his knee was down, and the ball, the ground caused the fumble. There's nothing about that end of the play. I think it's, was it a backward pass to Kerry Meyer? It has to either be down the line of scrimmage, totally laterally, or backward pass. But how about that? They're trying to spot the exact mark of the football. Was it at the one-yard line? Was it at the two-yard line? That's what they're looking at. Kerry Meyer, when his knee was down and he was extending the football, where was the football? They they're want to make sure that they spot the ball right because every yard's precious here inside the five-yard line. He's stretching it out, left knee down. Ball should be at about the two, right about where they have it marked. I think that's yeah. about accurate. Yeah, initially I thought they were doing what you're talking about, Dave, and then they right. let us know that it is simply the marking of uh, where the ball was down. And Kerry Meyer, you know, we talked about it. Kerry Meyer, the only player. In After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner's down at the two-yard line. In the, history, in the history of Kansas football, over 1,500 yards passing, over 1,500 yards receiving, and over 400 rushing. He's shown his versatility. He threw that football from the numbers to the numbers, and he threw a strike. Yeah. NFL scouts say this guy can throw the rock, man. As a freshman, he threw for almost 1,200 yards and 13 touchdowns. And now he's putting up record-setting receiving numbers. I'll tell you, he is unselfish and valuable. First and goal from the two-yard line. O'Connor. Yes. Touchdown, Kansas. Tobin O'Pearl, the freshman from Plano, Texas, out of Plano East High School, takes it in for the TD, getting his eighth touchdown of the year, first of the night. And the Jayhawks answer on their first possession with a touchdown after Colorado put up a three-pointer. 235 pounds, Bill. He'll move a pile on you. And a poor just borrowed it in there. Very, very intelligent. True freshman. Yeah. Doesn't need a lot of snaps. True freshman. A big, big impact. True freshman in the Big 12. Jacob Brandstetter for the PAT to close it within 10. Snap good. Kick is good. That's a Forum's eighth rushing touchdown of the season. And that's big time. That leads all Big 12 players in, in eighth in the nation amongst freshmen. 27-17, it is Colorado's lead of 10 now over the Kansas Jayhawks as the Jayhawks answer, and O'Purham coming through with the two-yard TD run. And the kick will be returned by Colorado. Bring it back to 25, the, almost the 30-yard line before he's brought down as Lockridge brings it out there. Our leaders of the game brought to you by Days in and O'Purham with his eighth touchdown of the year. Robinson, who burned him from, OSU, from Iowa State last week, with six, as well as Hilu and Austin Alma. Well, I'll tell you, you're, you're a true freshman, and, and in six football games, you've rushed for eight touchdowns for your football team. Not too shabby. That's making an immediate contribution. You were just on the yellow bus and at the prom months ago. First and ten as Hanson goes to work and complete out near the 40 to McKnight. Hanson, who started the game 8 of 11, then went 1 of 6 with a pick. Nice response here. And, and talk about responding, Bill. Kansas, their first seven drives, they netted 60 yards. The last two drives, 155 to end the half and to start the second half. Good protection, throws a strike. Vision totally unimpeded. You know, you want protection and you want space. Hanson had protection in all kinds of space. Five yards, nobody was near him. First and ten. Stewart. Ball's, Ball's up. Ball Ball Kansas Ball's has out. it. Wow. No indication yet. Waiting for the officials to sort it out. It is Jayhawk football. Wow. Now the turnovers are even in a short field for the Jayhawks. Here comes Kansas. The last two drives, remember, they've gone 155 yards. Now they have a short field. 
Stand him up. And the hit right there, the hit from behind, the punch out. Stucky was there, but the big hit was Jeff Wheeler. Jeff Wheeler hits him from behind. And Richard Jefferson or Johnson recovers it. Richard Johnson with the recovery. Ooh. Boy, Wheeler, or was it Blakes? It was 84-94. Somebody punched it out there, though, and it was a heck of an effort by one of the big boys up front, the slobber knockers from the Jayhawks. Last time they had a pick, Colorado answered with an interception of their own. Let's see what Reason does here. Good protection. He comes back to the money man, and Meyer, and Meyer hangs on tight till he gets to the 41-yard line, picks up a couple of yards. Jimmy Smith makes the play. First down markers brought to you by Overstock.com. Shop for the company that supports college football. Overstock.com at home with EO. Now that's 10 catches for Meyer. 26 catches in less than seven quarters of football. Are you kidding me? 27 catches is a season for a lot of people. He's done it in less than seven quarters. Yeah, 16 against Iowa State. In the game before that, he had 10 against Southern Miss. Man, that's 36 Incredible. catches in less than, less, than, less, than, less, than, less than 11 quarters. Looking for Prisco. Incomplete. No flag covered well by Jimmy Smith, the junior from Colton, California. Smith coming in with five passes broken up and 31 tackles. That's amazing. 36 catches in less than 11 quarters. That is sick. I mean, that is a quarterback and a receiver on the same page. And like we said a couple of times now, it can't be surprising because they sit right next to each other in the quarterback room and they diagnose and they scheme and they say, here's how we beat this coverage. Here's where I'm going to be. I'm going to find this space. KU 3 of 10 on third down conversions. 51% on the year. 3 of 10 tonight. Greasy. Plenty of time. A little thrown though. Across the middle that time and incomplete. Miller the coverage with a Moeller. Sean Moeller, the senior out of Newport Beach, California, number 47. As Briscoe, the intended receiver for the Jayhawks. And they'll come on with a kicking unit. Looks like Rojas. Play field position. Yeah. yeah. See if they can't pin the Buffaloes down inside their own tent. And Ron Collins comes with rush four, drop seven. And, and, and Kansas had four men in the route. Seven men covered them. There was no place to go with the football. Had to try and throw it underneath and see if the receiver could break a tackle. Couldn't get it done. Incomplete. So the Jayhawks can't take advantage or can they? They got to pass it on third down. The Falcon is complete. The 30, the first down and more as Beery comes up with him on the fake punt. And oh, Kansas oh, wow. will maintain possession on a 16-yard game. Martin Mangino's dialing him up. He says, okay, I'm going to go with the double pass. Going to carry Meyer back to Todd Reese. Now I'm going to go with the fake. And, man, it's per run the rugby deal, and your tight end is going to be the one that, that leaks and releases. And he's going to, oh, he's going to le leak, leak and release right here. And he's off to the races. He was he was one of the three men in the wedge, and all he did was leak underneath. Oh, that's just unbelievable call and even better execution. Poise. That's what it's all about by the play caller and the players. Poise. Seven of eight on fourth down conversions this year for okay. KU. And they complete this one again down inside the oh. 20. And hit running the knee. Tough tackle. Uh, does they get, come right back to Beery yeah, and Smart down. makes the tackle. Well, that's a throwback pass. It wasn't a tight end hide, but it's like you roll away. You roll away from the from the defensive back. And then you throw the throw back to the tight end. This is the fake to Beery. And the middle of the field is wide open. And Beery goes north and south, protect the football. Big, big play. Then they go right back to on first down for about seven. Sophomore out of Omaha, Nebraska, West Side High School. Came in with five grabs on the season. He just, just made a couple of big ones there. He missed a couple of games with sickness, Bill. He's a big factor now. Yeah, he's back and healthy, obviously. Second down play. They miss going to Meyer. You know what Beery does for them, Bill? Two things. In the running game, he sets the edge. He hooks the outside and allows the perimeter running game to go. And then you see how big a factor he is in the passing game. Reesing has so many weapons. Meyer, Briscoe, Beery, Wilson. On and on it goes. How do you cover them all? And right now, Mark Mangino has got his offense into a little bit of a rhythm. Of course, along with Ed Warner, who does a great job as a coordinator. Third and three for Reese, who's 19 of 32 for 219 yards. Looking to deliver again. Scrambling. Steps up. In trouble. Has to eat it. Buffalo's answer. 
Got Around and company at the 26-yard line, a loss on the play. Well, that's a bad mistake by an All-American Heisman Trophy type player. You do not take a sack on third down in the red zone. You cost your team precious yards for the field goal. You throw it away. You can't hit a home run every snap. When he turned around and retreated, and, and Mark Mangino's barking at him, you can't do that. You have to throw it away. You can't make a, a, a spectacular play every single snap. Every once in a while, throw it away and live for another down. He lost nine on the play. Puts a little more pressure on Jacob Brandstetter for a 43 yarder. He's got the leg here. Oh, got it in. Good. So the Jayhawks pick up a three spot as Brandstetter comes through after the Buffaloes answered defensively on the big third down. And Kansas is closed within a touchdown. How big are those two timeouts that, that Colorado burn? They only have one left. It's a one score game. Follow that. Well, folks, you know, Noxie does it all down on the sideline. And when he comes to Colorado, he always challenges Ralphie. Let's take a look as they came out for the second half. Here we go. And off, off we're going. Round three. Come on, Ralphie. Oh, yeah, baby. Here we go. We're going to whip him around here. He's not as fast as he was last time. He says speed for 25 miles an hour. We'll pick him up on the home stretch. Come on, Ralphie. Bring it home, baby. See what happened last time he smoked me, but I went into intense training. You see what happens? Knox, huh? you're my hero. That's what I'm owning all those fitness clubs does, bro. I like a 20-yard head start, huh? You're a machine. You're a machine. She can run. Ralph the female can pick him up and put him down. I'll tell you, one of the great traditions of college football. Don't get any better, does it? What a seed here in Boulder tonight. Here come the Buffs on the return. And Scott oh, oh, takes a tumble. And again, the kicker, I think, is the one that stopped him on the play as Daryl Scott looked like he was headed the house. And Branstetter comes through to deliver the blow. And he could have been called for hitting out of bounds. Yeah. I mean, the, the kicker got real aggressive, and Scott was well out of bounds. I think the officials lost track of that white mark again. There's the mat on the sideline. There's the boundary. And then there's the white. He's out of bounds. And then the white line, the mat line, that's all taped up. And you lose track of those. I think Branstetter lost track. No harm, no foul. Colorado has good field position. But he's run a little bit, though. He wants to make sure he's in Boulder still. First and 10 for the Bucks. Keep it on the ground here as Stewart, the ball carrier here. And, and, and here's Brandstetter on an earlier play, head to head. Ooh, that'll knock you silly. And I mean, he came he, back for more. Yeah, he said, you know what? I'm going to get my pass level lower that was earlier in the game and Brandstetter took a shot you know what it's, that's a that's a gold star on the forehead right there I mean if, if you're going to do that twice that's a man right there that's not a, that's a football player that's not just a kicker he likes contact Hopefully he's not seeing their star Stewart 16 of 66 on the running game as Hanson back in the air completes the Seamus he scampers out of bounds on the Colorado sideline the 42 yard line and Chris Harris they're covering for the Jayhawks all kinds of football left. Oh, yeah. 3-12 to go in the third. Jayhawks within 7, 27 to 20. But the question here, Bill, is Colorado's had a great game planned and executed. How will they respond? Kansas is in rhythm. Kansas can score. Now you feel like you have to score every possession because Kansas is starting to. Must respond. They sure are. There's no question, Bill. And that's just that's just an unbelievable effort. And Ryan Murphy comes out with the football. But you know, at some point you just cut your losses. And both quarterbacks, Todd Reesing, took a sack in the red zone that cost his team some yards. Now they got the field a lot of it. In this case, Hanson, not there on the pump fake. Cut your losses. Tuck the ball away. It's out there like a loaf of bread. Put it away. And you have bad ball security, right and Murphy, Murphy takes it away. Yeah, right looked like he knocked it away, and then Murphy comes up with it. Ryan is a sophomore from Lawrence out of Free State High School there in Kansas. Oh. And now the Jayhawks a chance to tie it up 
will take the lead if they can score and go for two if they would so choose. The hard aches for Tyler Hanson. He's had such a great game, but at a key time, you have to tuck it away. Sharp. That leads for a yard or two. And now this crowd is just dead quiet here in Boulder. Yeah, as Kansas approaches the red zone again, Todd Reesing knows. One thing I'm not going to do, I'm not going to put my team in jeopardy by taking a sack, and I'm certainly going to demonstrate ball security. In a game like this, not only making big plays, but avoiding the big mistake as this thing unfolds is going to be a big determining factor. Remember, the Buffaloes led 24-3 with 2.24 to go in the half. Kansas scored before an omission, and now the Jayhawks, a chance to get on the board again. And tied up, Reesing on a second down. Incomplete, looking for Jonathan Wilson, the junior out of Houston, Texas, Klein Forest High School. And Terrell Brown on the coverage. Kansas is doing a better job of picking up those delayed blitzes. Colorado was hurting them with a de delayed blitz. The offensive line would scan the linebackers. They head and blitz. As soon as they turn their heads to another responsibility, the linebackers would come late. And those delayed blitzes were getting home on recent. They've made a good adjustment at halftime. Kansas doing a much better job of picking up Colorado's blitzes. Ron Collins had a good scheme. Kansas is still minus 17 yards rushed. Briscoe brought down just as he catches the football at the 25. Chappelle right there as Reese connects with his other big playmaker, Desmond Briscoe. We're going to have to settle for a field goal again. Nice job by the Colorado defense pulling their necks and saying, you know what? You might get a field goal out, but that's all. That's just a great read and beating the lineman to the spot. If the lineman can get the kickoff block, Briscoe's off for nice yards. Lyman couldn't get there. Recognition close to the football. Colorado, like a heat seeking missile, limits it to nothing but a field goal opportunity. Brandstetter on for a 42 yarder. He hit from 43 just a couple of moments ago. And it is good. So with 115 remaining here in the third quarter, it is Kansas now back within four, 27-23. A next week college football Saturday triple header. First of all, Iowa State looks to knock off Zach Lee in Nebraska. They fell to Tech today. Then it's Louisiana Monroe against Kentucky. And in the nightcap, Arizona State will go against high-powered Stanford in a decisive Pac-10 battle. Action kicks off at 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 Pacific. And remember, presented by Phillips HD. Well, here's the stud. You heard about a boy named Sue. This is a man named Sue. And I call him Superman. This guy is a big-time player. I mean, he's leading the team. He's tied for the team lead in interceptions. He's, he's uh, got the team lead with seven passes broken up. He's a tackle for loss and sack machine. He is a candidate for defensive player of the year on all kinds of watch lists. Lombardi, Bronco Nagurski, Jim Thorpe, you name him, he's on all their lists. He is something to watch, that is for sure. And the Nebraska's going to want to bounce back after being beaten in Lincoln by Texas Tech. The Red Raiders responded after a couple of losses this year back to back on the road to Texas and Houston. Came back and beat New Mexico, then hammered Kansas State, and then go up and win in Lincoln. So Brandstetter will kick it off here with a 27-23, and it is juggled, and Scott will down it there. And, and Bill, what Tyler Hansen has to realize as he comes out in the football field, ball security. This is a four point game right now. And on this last play, screen pass, it's not there. It's it, the timing's disrupted. Put the ball away. Eat your lunch. Don't try to make a play and have it out there like a loaf of bread. He has the ball stripped from him and, and short field. His defense helps him out, limits it nothing to nothing more than a field goal. But still, do not put your team in jeopardy. And ball security has to be number one on your mind right now. Responds. This is a one and four team that is getting better. Oh, and and move. it's going to cost him another mistake by the Buffaloes here. As dead ball, false start, number 34. Penalty offense. of the night. Five yard penalty, still first down. Ryan Dean, the sophomore from Poway, California. The tight end, you know, a tight end can go backwards, but you can't start the play. You can't go forward and fake the start of a play. Watch it. You can't do that. Now you can go backwards and reset. You can't merge forward. That cost him. 
First and 15. off in the backfield to Sumler and Sumler out near the 18 yard line. Blakesley makes the tackle along with Stuckey. Stuckey's been in a lot of plays tonight as well as coming up with an interception for the Jayhawks. You know, Kansas slowly take control of the game though it appears. Yeah and, and Bill there's been great adjustments not only offensively but defensively for Kansas. I mean in the first half Colorado was having their way. At, at the end of the second quarter and into the third quarter Kansas adjusted defensively. Hanson nearly stumbled as he came away from the center. Oh, great move by Stewart before he's tackled at the 25. Still going to be third and about five for the first down as Dudley makes the stop. I'll tell you, this spin move, Bill, I mean, you spin like this and get north and south. Spin, get right up the football field again. I mean, I'd be dizzy. I, I, I'd go to the ground not being able to keep my balance. I mean, when you hit the ground, we'd yeah. have about a 3.5 on the Richter, too. But that's a whirling dervish right there, man. That's a Tasmanian devil. If I tried that, and if you tried it, I think, Bill, too. I mean, I know you're a great athlete, but ACLs, PCLs, MCLs, Carlitz, they'd all be strewn on that field down there. I'm worried about pulled fat. That's about it. <laughs> That is the end of the third quarter. What a dandy we've got here in Boulder, Colorado. The Buffaloes looking for their first Big 12 win and trying to knock off the 15th ranked Jayhawks of Kansas. Lead it 27 23 after three. Watching college football Saturday for the Big 12. Well, E Harmony with our Three quarters stat look here, and total yards are 230 Kansas, 235 Colorado. Kansas right on their heels, even though they're minus 17 in the rushing category day. Yeah, four sacks of Todd Reeson, make 17 yards, three of 13 on third down. Colorado's defense has been unbelievable getting Kansas off the field. Turnovers have helped bring KU back into this one. Hansen in trouble here on a third and five. Hansen still on his feet at the 10. I mean, Hanson did everything right on that play. You talk about creating and extending a play. Gets out of pocket, patience, poise, step up, find somewhere on cover, lead him. Oh, you can't do it any better if you walk up and give it to him. Unfortunately, Sumler does not look the ball in. He's trying to. I mean, oh, that's a flat drop. He had good concentration, looked it in, just dropped it. Kansas nearly got that cut. Not to Badilala. And... Taken big yards. Yes. And now Kansas gets it right back. Great field position at the 42 yard line. And a timeout on the field with a 27 23 Colorado. Colorado 27 23 missed a golden opportunity on that third down play. Demetrius Sumler couldn't find the handle. Who knows where he ended up on this? Well, he's a running back and he's in space. He's going to come into picture here soon. He's going to scramble drill. He breaks away from the linebacker right here. He presents himself as a, as a target. I should say right here, presents himself as a target. If he makes him miss, I mean, who knows? He's out to the 45 yard line midfield. I mean, got a blocker. All of all of running back wants is a ball in space. And Hanson created and extended the play to buy himself time and space. Delivers a strike. The next few circle that big third down play. Kansas didn't stop him. Colorado self-destructed. Colorado 0-3 on third downs in the second half after going 4-7 in the first. Great field position for the Jayhawks now, who have scored on their last four possessions. They've got 13 unanswered points and have closed within 27-23. Reesing delivers to Sharp. 50, 35, stays in bounds. No, he didn't. Stepped out of bounds at the 39-yard line, but a big first down. Moeller knocked him out on a 19-yard pickup for Jake Sharp. And we're talking about Jake Sharp's speed at the top of the broadcast. 4-3 speed. Look at Moeller. Barely, barely got the angle. Clipped his heels. Is he out of bounds? Line judge says, yeah, he stepped out of bounds. Gosh, that's very close. Might have, might have gotten an extra 10 yards there if he wasn't marked out. Did he tiptoe it up the side? He's in bounds. He's not out of bounds. You got to take another look at that. That's 10 yards right there. First and 10. Jake Sharp 
Showing his wheels there. Yep. Got it off. And complete here. That is close to another first down. Smith covering on the play as Wilson comes up with the reception. Okay, Jake Sharp makes the catch. Next play, you got to block because he's going to go to one of your teammates. You know, you got to do it all. Let's pick up, give him time, throw a strike. I mean, it's what you do with the ball, what you do without the ball. Everybody has to participate. Nobody's bigger than the team. It's an unselfish football team. Sharp got a hold, doesn't oh. need much, and then he got popped at the 25-yard line and no more. And Sharp does get the first down before Ray Polk hammered it. Well, you know, they, I think they wanted to get some rust and dust off of Sharp because they have Oklahoma next week, and they want to get him a little bit into the rhythm and timing, and he's much better in the second half, Bill, than he was in the first series yeah. of the game. He is less hesitant, much more decisive, much more authoritative, lowering his pads, playing football again. Now Kansas coming in 5-0. and oh. They can come back and win this one. Boy, the schedule really tough. Got a man in the end zone, and it is complete. Desmond Briscoe, when the big boy gets down the middle of the football field, he had him early. And Todd Reese said, I'm going to find you, big fella. You're my big play guy. <clears throat> what a play. So Reese to Briscoe for 25 yards in the score. And the Jayhawks are on top with 13.02 remaining. They lead it by two, 29, 27. And Brandstetter for the point after. A shootout again. This offense can score quickly. And it is good. Kansas with 13.02 to go in the ball game takes the lead. Well, Briscoe's got deceptive speed. And he just puts the afterburners on. And he just runs right by the secondary. And Todd Reesing said, I knew you could do it. He ran by the safety pole. And missed. Welcome back. It is 30-27. Jayhawks on top again. Our direct TV game summary. It's been all Kansas since the end of the first half. They scored on the last five possessions. Meyer leading the way. Colorado Hanson getting his first start. 11 of 20 for 134 a TD and a pick. Colorado's got to do something with the football here. They have They've seen how Kansas is now ranked number 15. Kansas never lost its cool, even though when things didn't go their way. You're right, Bill, and, and they're scoring every possession. That puts pressure on you offensively. You feel like you have, if you pump the football, you feel like you're behind the eight ball. Because Kansas can just rip you every single possession. And the kick. Scott. 20. Good return out to the 24-yard line. Well, you know, Bill, football's all about mismatches and matchups. You got a great player, Briscoe, on a safety pull. Eyes light up. Eyes light up. See you later. Take him. Post. Straight up the football field. Touchdown. I mean, that's a mat matchup you have to win. A safety, not a cover corner, on your number one receiver in terms of big plays. Briscoe and Reesing said, Wow, we got to make good on this one. Briscoe is 26 career touchdown reception for the Kansas Jayhawks and puts them on top again. First time they've led since that opening field goal by Branstetter back in the first quarter. I think Gear flinched and caused the, the left hand to go. Five yard penalty, still first down. And even though those are small miscues, it makes it much more difficult for you. Operating and deep in your own territory. And it's not crowd noise, you're at home. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, your advantage is the snap count. And you have to remember the snap count. You can't flinch. On the road, that's more understandable if the crowd's big in your ear. See Dan Hawkins, his fourth year here at Colorado after coming from Boise State and seeing his club at one and four. Now down in this game. Looks like they're bringing on the pressure. Hansen feels it, still looking. In the secondary, Hanson back on his own five yard line. Better away. Better on low. <laughs> Still looking. Got, Got him there. Oh, incomplete. What a play. <laughs> After walk 
welcome some of our viewers that have just joined us here. Bill Land, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox. We've had a doozy. Colorado jumped out early to a 21-point lead. They now find themselves behind to the 15th-ranked Kansas Jayhawks, 30-27. to The Jayhawks have scored on their last five possessions and have 20 unanswered points during that time as you take a look at the score by quarter. And now Colorado is faced with a second down and 15 from its own 19-yard line, and the Buffaloes just missing on a wild play a moment ago. Hanson across the middle, a little bit behind Seamus, the intended receiver. Boy, now, now, now the receivers are, are betraying the quarterback. Sumler had a drop on third down in the last possession in the play before this one. I mean, he, he throws a ball that Rodney Stewart can make a catch on. Would be a, not an easy, a, a, as easy a catch as Sumler would have had, but Tyler Hanson, Creating, extending, Graham Tarkenton like. I mean, scramble where I'm and, and throws a strike down the football field, and his receiver can't hold on to the football. Too bad. Saw Cody Hawkins, who has been the starting quarterback and was replaced in the starting lineup this week. And Tyler Hansen. Hansen has played well. He's going to have to make some plays here. In trouble again. Escapes again. Still going. Wow. This one is caught, and it's a first down. Wow. to the 48 yard line and it's Tyler Hansen again Kansas feels like they've got him contained I mean the pass rush is there but it's an 18 wheeler trying to change direction in space against a Ferrari and the 18 wheeler loses and the Ferrari's out to the races again and he hits the tight end gear down the middle Jeff Wheeler cannot wheel and deal in space like Tyler Hansen and he makes him pay 28-yard pickup as Hanson hit his 18-wheeler gear. <laughs> now Hanson sprinting, put on the brakes, ducks forward for a couple of more on a first and 10 situation as Lovick Smith, redshirt freshman from Dallas, Texas, makes the tackle for the Kansas Jayhawks. First down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com tonight. At Overstock.com, our award-winning customer service will make you feel at home with the O. The Buffaloes trying to come back and regain the lead. 11-27 remaining in the game. McKnight comes out wide left. Earlier made a reception for the 31st straight game. They hand it off though. And breaking a tackle, tries to bounce it for a couple of more yards. And the play is Rodney Stewart. Smith and crew are there again. We have complimentary plays here, Bill. They're running the counter where they pull the backside guard and tackle and giving the ball to Stewart. And then when Hanson feels like it's appropriate timing, he's going to fake the ball, take it out of Stewart's gut, and they're going to run the counter keep by the quarterback, counter read. And they've got him. It's just confidence. It's, 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 you establish a pressure point, and have a counter play off of it. Nothing fancy. The simpler, the better. So Hanson, a little work again here tonight as Hanson. 12 of 23 for 163 Last time yards. Last timeout, Juice. Time out. and a half minutes to play. Colorado. Last time out. And it's their third timeout. Wow. In a three-point game. With a third and four, Dan Hawkins will mull it over. We welcome you back to Boulder, Colorado, and Folsom Field on the campus of the University of Colorado. Big 12 football action. Errol Scott in the backfield here for the Buffs. Huge third and three, burning their last time out of the game right here. Hanson delivers. Got the first down. It is complete to gear. We got rough in the quarterback. Yes. We're going to be a flag thrown in the backfield as Hanson gets up a little shaky. Stuckey makes the tackle. But Hanson delivered. Colorado came out. Virtual foul, roughing the passer. Defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Late hit, late to the head. 
Big, big play. Big mistake by the Jayhawks. Two tight ends. Get the tight end gear off the line of scrimmage in the route. He hooks up, uses his body, boxes him out, and makes the play. He won't let Ryan Murphy get to the football. And at the end of it, overzealous, Kansas, it's Tyler Hansen late. You see Kansas, five penalties for 35. Colorado, seven for 45. And a huge one there as Colorado has it at the 25-yard line. And on the ground, getting about five down inside the 21-yard line. Smith makes the tackle on the play on Rodney Stewart. There have been some missed opportunities in this one tonight. Uh, Sumler, he's going to break free from the linebacker, present himself as an available target, and drop the pass. And he would have had nice yards after catch. And then scramble around, create, extend the play. Down the football field, Rodney Stewart, the running back. And Tyler Hansen's going to throw a deep ball after eluding all kinds of would-be tacklers and hit him right in the hands. Can't control it. Again, it is Stewart on the carry on a second down and Laptad. Jake Laptad made the tackle, the junior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, Jenks High School, that football powerhouse. Dan Hawkins looks on here. Another third and three, Dave, with 9.26 to go. They got to get something out of this drive and at least get their fans back into it. It's only a three-point game. If you told them last week after losing to Texas, it's 30-27 against Kansas here, you'd take it right now, right? And I think he's got to be proud of the way his team has responded and fought. They've not taken advantage of every opportunity. They haven't quit. They're still in the hunt. Hanson looking for the first down. Spins. He's got Inside the 14-yard line, and Tyler Hansen with Smith making the tackle shows you what you can do with those quick feet. And right now, you're in the red zone. Don't turn the football over. Don't put your team in jeopardy. Ball security's big. Touchdown. You gotta think touchdown. Field goal ties it up, but you want to take a lead. Remember, you have no timeouts. You want to have a lead. You don't want to have to try to come back with no timeouts at the end of the game. First and ten. situation they ran the counter the linemen got their blocks Rodney Stewart broke a tackle Colorado back in the lead in the seesaw battle what an answer for the Buffalo Stewart a 13-yard TD run and the kick is up and good by Goodman and it's the Buffs back on top 34 to 30 doing a good job of being patient vision look at the linemen get their blocks both linemen pull kick out Turn back inside, seal it. Rodney Stewart takes it to the house. What an effort. Big 12 College Football Saturday is presented by Phillips HD. The images that move you the most are what we deliver the best and brought to you in part by eHarmony.com. Are you ready to fall in love? And by American Airlines. We know why you fly. We're American Airlines. Welcome back as Kansas decides to not bring it out. Frisco. Scored a touchdown a moment ago. Well, now stay on with the offensive group as Colorado answers here. Stewart, that 13-yard TD run, 10 plays, 76 yards. And Colorado connected on three, or converted, I should say, on three third-down situations to keep that drive alive, Dave. Creeping up on 100 yards rushing is Rodney Stewart. Staying with that counter play. We'll show you what it looked like for the touchdown. It was executed to perfection. Stewart, one of five Big 12 running backs to have multiple 100-plus yard rushing days coming into this game tonight, trying to get his third of the year. But right now, Colorado on the stop against Reesing and company. There's Briscoe again, stretching and grabbing it at the 35-yard line where Springer makes the stop. Well, now you got a guy that's done this a plenty times, Briscoe and Todd Reeson. They find the seam behind the linebacker. Automatic first down. Roughing the quarterback. Todd Reeson got hit late. So I attack 15 onto that. All of a sudden, swings half the football field. Bang! In one play. Now, after Smart makes the tackle, and then there they sit at midfield now as the Jayhawks. They're already threatening, you want to call it that. 
on the last possession for Kansas, Reese was three of three for 53 yards. They went four, 58 yards in just four plays to score on that 25-yard TD pass to Briscoe. Colorado, eight penalties and 60 yards now after their 20 penalties a week ago. Reese got a little time now. Creates. Got his man, Wilson. And Wilson rolls to the 35 of Colorado. You know, the, whenever Reesing scrambles, there's a package that they go back to. Everybody works their way back to the quarterback. Wilson realizes Reesing's running for his life, runs his pattern to the sideline, make himself an available target to the quarterback. It's controlled chaos out there when Todd Reesing extends the play. They have a system in place, and they execute it beautifully. Reesing connects to Wilson. That's Wilson's sixth reception of the night. He came in with 17 on the season. Reesing again, steps up, got dragged oh, down, left it up for oh. Grimes. Oh, my goodness. He's wide open down there as... Harad had put the pressure on the quarterback. Yep, Harad grabbed him by the by the back of the collar, by the by the back of the jersey, and tried to grab that right throwing arm, but couldn't quite get it. Reeson was able to let it go. But boy, tantalizingly, the ball's hanging up there. Ball's incomplete. Bad decision. That ball floated out there, could have been just as easily picked off. He's 25 of 40 for 300 yards tonight. Todd Reeson. Week he threw for 442 against Iowa State in a nail biter. In trouble again, and he can't get out of it this time. The Buffaloes answer at the 49 yard line. Taking the way Cunningham and Harai. Todd Reese feels like he can't step up in the pocket, and he keeps trying to retreat and outrun the ends. Sometimes he's been successful, sometimes he hasn't. Because of the pressure coming both ways, he can't step up. So he tries to retreat and outrun it. That's not going to work either. Sometimes you just have to step up and take your losses. That was the fifth time he was taken to the ground. Five sacks, that's rare. Todd Reese never gets called that many times. Lost 14 on the play, and it's third and 24 from the 49. Flag thrown here, they won't get this one underway. Prior to the snap, delay a game. Offense. Pushing line. back a few more for the down. Jayhawks here. They're 0 of 4 on third down this half, even though they had that period where they scored five straight possessions. third down for the night. Yet they trail by four. Well, there's not many plays third and 30. No. See what they got in the Mangino bag of tricks here. Reese going to have to make something big happen. Scrambling again. Reese going deep. Oh. Briscoe's got it. There's your first down play. <laughs> Throw it up to Desmond Briscoe and let him go. Get that sucker. Perkins trying to cover on the play. Well, all you do, like we said in the open, Todd Reesing feels like Briscoe is open when he's covered because of his ability to run, to jump, to use the big body, to box out. It was a rebound. He boxed him out. He boxed Perkins out. He used that body and made the play. Unbelievable effort as Reesing once again gets out of pocket, extends, creates. Amazing. 42 yards and a first down. Reesing. Dumps this one off. Sharp to the five, trying to spin down into the end zone. Knocked out of bounds at the three-yard line as Jake Sharp. Jeff Smart makes the tackle. Todd Reesing refuses to lose. That's his mentality. He's won 25 football games and lost six at Kansas. Had a shaky start, but he's a Heisman Trophy candidate. He comes back after you. He responds. Check down to Sharp. Put yourself in a first and goal situation. Todd Reesing is relentless. He's entertaining. He's exciting. He is college football's finest, amongst the finest players. First and goal to go from the three. Sharp. Nothing doing there. Got a yard, it appears. It'll be second and goal from the two as Curtis Cunningham, a sophomore from Littleton, Colorado, makes the tackle. And Jayhawks trying to regain the lead. Clock ticking with 528, 527, and moving. And remember, Colorado. No timeouts. No timeouts yep. remaining, so they get the ball back. 
and, 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 and uh, Kansas has two. Two timeouts left. That's big with five minutes to go in a game like this. Got to score here, though. Don't put the cart before the whole horse. Can't settle. Field goal does you no good. Got to take the lead with a touchdown. Reese Looking it. for Meyer. Got it. Got it. Making it look easy. Call the pick. They called OPI. They called the offensive yep. passing the field. Flag is there thrown. It is. Yeah, you're all over, Dave, as the Colorado fans show their jubilation on that call. Pass they got a first. Offense. And we're 81. Yep. 15 yard penalty. Repeat second down. Jonathan Wilson. Yep, he picked the bones clean. You know, John, Jonathan Wilson is on the outside and watch him. He's just going to pick the bones clean and Meyer's going to have an easy shot. They call the offensive pass interference. They don't feel he's trying to run the route. They feel like he's just trying to block the defender for making a play on Meyer. Huge, oh. huge red zone penalty on the OPI, offensive pass interference. Your second and goal from the two. Now, second down, you can repeat the down, but from the 17, you don't have to score all in one play. Three receivers wide right, one to the left for Todd Reesing. He keeps it. Reesing's got room. He's at the 10. And Reesing must have heard you. Said, all right, I'll get him down yeah. to the six. Exactly. And, and I'll tell you, kudos to my big boy, Jeremiah Hatch. Watch the center, number 77. Will he get down the field? Cut. That's outstanding football. And Todd Reesing takes full advantage of it. But the big fella got down the field at the next level and cut the linebacker, Marcus Burton, right off his feet. Nice job by Jeremiah Hatch, who went from left tackle last year to center this year. Timeout, Kansas now, as the Jayhawks have one remaining timeout, and they will have a third and goal from the six after an 11-yard pickup by the quarterback, Todd Reeson. Bill, let's go back and show why Colorado has the lead. The outstanding offensive line coach, Denver Johnson, is going to like this. Watch his lineman pull, kick out, turn up the football field, and then the running back's going to split two would-be tacklers. Unbelievable play. Matthew Barr, the right guard, and Ryan Miller, the right tackle. Boom, boom, kick out, seal. Now split two defenders. Missed tackle, missed tackle, touchdown. Simple play, outstanding execution. And I'll tell you what. That's what gave Colorado the lead, but Todd Reese said, let's respond. We've been here before, we've done it before, we can do it again. So Reese, three of nine and passing on third down. He's 27 of 43 tonight, 352 yards. Meyer, the man in motion there, going back and forth. Reese, looking for Meyer. Oh. And it'll go. Flag, so yeah. gonna get a call there. Meyer thought that he was grabbed, but it's not gonna be called. And then I think the official thought uncatchable. Yeah. But, but Meyer thinks like if he didn't grab me, I might have been able to separate to get the ball. Ball goes in motion, and as he separates, he does get pushed a little bit and he loses his balance. The official says you would not have caught that football incomplete. We're going into that end zone where those Colorado student fans are jumping up and down trying to create as big a rack as they can here at Folsom Field. Yeah. Fourth and goal from the six. Remember, KU seven of eight on fourth down conversions this year. Reesing. Oh. Frisco! Incomplete! Incomplete! Oh. Colorado holds! Smith was covering on the play, and now the Buffs get the ball back on their own Six. And they cannot stop the clock. They have no timeouts. So the Buffaloes, the only way the clock stops is to get first downs. It stops momentarily. They're going to have to ditch the ball, spike the ball. And that, oh, what a throw. I mean, Briscoe could not quite get there. He's bracketed coverage, but the ball is on the money. And Briscoe gets two hands on it, but the rake, the violent rake, getting after the football by Jimmy Smith is outstanding. Jimmy Smith gets right hand in there and rips at it. Colorado backed up. How will, how spread out will they go? How razzle dazzle would they go with Tyler Hansen? No timeouts to work. Can't make a mistake. They lead by four. They want to just milk this thing. Kansas with just one timeout. And on the run, not much doing on that first down play. And Kansas sitting here looking, all right, if we can get a stop, Dave, yeah. you're still going to get good field position and get the ball back near midfield. But they're going to have to tune it up defensively a little bit. They're going to they're going to get the ball back with probably a little two and a half minutes, two minutes somewhere in there with a timeout. 
Now, will they get a short field? Will they be inside the 50-yard line? Will there be an unbelievable punt? Will there be some sort of return? Special teams are going to be doing this. Will he be punting out of his own end zone? Or will Colorado move the chains here? Second and ten. No gain for the Buffs on that first down situation. From their own six, leading by four. Right up the gut. Oh. And close to the first down as the Buffs move it out near the 15-yard line for Phillips HD game break. Let's go to Darren Horton. Bill, second part of our doubleheader is underway in Tempe, and Jake Locker striking early. Hook it up with Devin Aguilar, 49 yards, and the Huskies jump out on top, 7-0 on Arizona State. Bill? Thank you, Darren. Yeah, Locker and crew. Huskies against the Sun Devils tonight. Many of you will go to that after the completion of this one. It is third and two for Colorado, though, right now. 3.02 to go. He delivers the pass, but no. Oh, knocked away. He caught it and yep. Reception, and that will move the change. Yep. You'll get the first down. He had possession, turned it up the football field, then it was stripped. He might have gone to the house, Dave, if he's able to complete that hanging on and stay in bounds. Yep, the strip was a big gamble, and the strip works, gets it out of bounds. But if he can maintain possession, I think he picks up a few more yards. Stucky was coming over the top. McKnight's not a burner, but every yard's important now. You're going to make Kansas, if they get the ball back, go as far as possible. So first and ten. Wow. And again, they keep it on the ground here as... Stewart carries the ball. You saw that note there that Arizona State and Washington, many of you are headed there after this one here as Washington taking the lead. Look at that. Kansas a minus 15 rushing because of the sack right. situation that Reesing has been put in. Five and sacks. Colorado trying to ice it, trying to run it out here tonight. And they have a running back that's, that's accumulated 100 yards rushing. And, and, and Rodney Stewart has done a great job. He's got 23 carries, 108 yards, two touchdowns. That's a full night's work. Offensive line, great job up front with that gap angle block. And again, it is Stewart with the ball. Ball this time at the 25-yard line. And Kansas, remember, just one timeout remaining here. Exactly. And, and, and I'll tell you, for the offensive line to punch out of that bad field position by running the football, and then on third down, you have a young quarterback that's growing up before your very eyes. I mean, the big completion, Tyler Hansen to, to McKnight. Huge, throwing the ball to the perimeter and getting out of bounds. And Hansen needs to build that play clock here. Still got 10 seconds to go to get that thing as low as it's possible. And on a third down, keeping the ball and... Now you call the timeout. Yep. Kansas will call timeout here with 1.14 remaining and Colorado facing a punting situation. Well, that, that first down they, that Colorado generated took, took them, took another minute off the clock. Hanson a little bit of a limp, grabbing that right hamstring a little bit. He snapped the ball with seven seconds on the play clock on that, on that third down snap. Now, Kansas will get the football back. Will they pressure the punter? Taking a chance of roughing the punter if you do that. Do you go for the return? Now, make sure you have no illegal blocks in the back. Can Colorado cover the thing? So many variables right now. You're going to get the ball back with about a minute to play. No timeouts in the clock. But you have Todd Reesing, Barry Meyer, Desmond Briscoe, Jake Sharp, all those weapons to have to defend. So Washington, Arizona State 7-7. Again, remind many of you will be going following our college football Saturday Big 12 action to the Pac-10 to join the Sun Devils and the Huskies knotted at 7. And we have an exciting 114 left here. Looks like they're pressuring, Bill. Delalo back to punt, coming after it. He booms it. And it is taken at the 30. Back to the 25. Wow. Still loose. Wow. Patterson is tackled at the 25-yard line with 59 seconds to go. Tremendous coverage. He gave ground. He lost yards. Could never shake Colorado's punt coverage team. Tremendous play in the kicking game by the Buffaloes. Less than a minute to play. 59 seconds. Field goal does you no good. Have to score a touchdown. That's why they went for it on fourth down. And Briscoe could not quite come down with it in the end zone. 52-yard punt, minus seven on the return. 
Here's Reese. Trying to pull one oh. out. He is set. Falls out. Kansas picks it up. Shot to the 30 and to the 32-yard line. The fumble was caused by Forrest West, the freshman from Spiker. Connecticut. Yeah, clock moving. 40 seconds. Reese. Second down. Looking for Meyer and incomplete. Stops the clock with 33 seconds to go. Well, take a look at the uh, at the fumble. West punches the ball out of there. Jake Sharp says, I'll take it. I'll take it. That's just a heady player being smart, advancing the football. This is just like the Missouri-Kansas game. It comes down to the very end. They scored on fourth and 26, I think, with 27 seconds to go. Can Kansas pull it off on the road at Colorado? Uh, that was the regular season closer last year. Recent trying to bring him some more heroics here. And delivers to Briscoe. That moves the chains. It's at the 46 of Kansas. Clock will stop momentarily as they reset. Now Recent looks for a play. Safeties get deeper. You're only 15 yards deep. Field goal does nothing. Recent. Sideline Meyer steps out of bounds. 17 seconds to go. A little short of the first down, but that's not the factor at this moment. 17 seconds to go. It is second down, and they are at the 41-yard line of Colorado. They have to have a touchdown to win. Colorado needs to funnel them inside. You can't let them work the sidelines. Then they can stop the clock getting out of bounds. Use the sideline as a 12th defender. Work them back inside. Second and two, Reesey. Going deep for Briscoe. Oh. He caught it. Spike it. We got to spike it. Got to spike it. Ten seconds. Clock stop momentarily. They'll reset. And Reesey completing a 26-yard strike to Briscoe. Downs the football wow. with seven seconds to go. Todd Reesey, ice in his veins. And like we said all game long, Desmond Briscoe is open when he's caught. Because he's 6'3, 202 pounds, has leaping ability, contested catch. What an effort! Uses that strong body to box the defender out. He caught it more than once and secures it to the ground. Big time. Here they go. Second and ten. Seven seconds remaining. From the 19-yard line. Kansas trailing by four. Reset oh. to Bayern incomplete. Running through was Brown. Gilbert Brown not it off. If he picks it off, the game's over. Three seconds remaining. Kansas will have one more pop. I wonder if he thought it was fourth down. I don't know how he would have thought that, but I mean, it's like you can pick that off. It's third down. You get two hands on it, the game's over. Now they have another shot at it. You let them have another life. Fourth down, that's a great play. Third down, try to pick it off. Briscoe and Meyer go wide right. Remember, a couple years ago, you were here when Oklahoma was ranked yeah. and lost to Colorado. Can Kansas come back in the end zone? Oh, incomplete! Buffaloes win! They knock out the 15th ranked team in the country, the Kansas Jayhawks! And still, Briscoe almost makes an unbelievably athletic play again. He is as good as I've ever seen in the jump ball contested catch department. He came up with a few, just missed a couple. What a football game. Came down to the final snap. And the Colorado Buffaloes get their first Big 12 win, knocking off the 15th ranked Kansas Jayhawks. Another unbeaten goes down in college football. Coming up next. Pac-10 action. Washington will meet Arizona State. This is Bill Land for Dave Lapham and Jim Knox and our entire crew saying so long from Boulder where Colorado knocks off the Kansas Jayhawks 34-30. What a night for the Colorado Buffaloes as they go to 2-4. and four. The Jayhawks drop to 5-1. and 1-1 one. One and one in Big 12 play. You've been watching a Big 12 college football Saturday presentation by Phillips HD.